<laughs> yeah. Back again, mother lovers. What's going on? What's going on, world? How you lot feeling out there? This is my Stiggy right here on some shit you might not never know nothing about. That's right. The podcast is back as we usually are. We do our best to do Wednesdays, of course. I'm here with my co-host, Dan DNA. What's going on, bruv? Good. <laughs> different shot there. Yeah, yeah. That oh, camera there. We're giving you angles, man. We're giving you angles. Look. <laughs> See that? And we're still deep in the blue planet. What's going on, brothers and sisters out there locked in? Thank you for coming and joining us on this lovely Wednesday evening, hump day. Man, I had a good day. Just uh, relaxing. We've been doing. Because I had a bit crazy night. Uh, it was a good night last night, man. I was down at Jazz Cafe mm. representing for Big Bro Ty. May he rest in uh-huh. peace. Um, they had an event. Um, no long thing. Uh, man, it was, um, you know what I mean? It was special, man. A lot of people turned up and performed uh, in memory of the great brother. Uh, yeah, it was amazing, man. You know, a very emotional night. Mm. Um, his mum and his sister turned up. And uh, they got handed a plaque that had been made for him. Um, so, yeah, man, you know, and I saw so many people, man. I can't even remember all the names. Shorty Blitz, Terry Walker, Yari from uh, One Extra. Um, man, Shawnee T. I saw Scheme. Big Cakes was there. Uh, Logic. Uh, Tremendous. The Freshers crew was there. <laughs> um, Ty's Band was there. Vula. Um, LaDonna uh, and yeah the whole band were there man Richard Spaven you know Eric Apapula it was like what and yeah so you know his his spirit was there mm. in, the, in the room with Jazz Cafe um, a bunch of people turned up as well I saw Tommy Evans there um, Ryan Proctor shout out to Ryan <laughs> Proctor it was like yeah it was really it felt good and obviously because you know we ain't been out that much yeah so it felt good to see people regardless and also there was um uh, shout to Apex Zero as well. Yeah, it was just that kind of energy of like, yo, we need to we need to come together more, man. We need to communicate more. Mm. You know what I mean? We need to uh, be more open to each other. You know what I mean? And it, it, it felt like that all the way um, with so many different people. Like Heidi, Vogel was there. Man. But it's the first thing, the first time that that people have been out since he died though, isn't it? Because he died during COVID, so mm. so people haven't been able to really get together. So it's sort of like a wake. Yeah, you know, in a sense, you're right because mm. yeah, the, um, the funeral had to be watched online mm. because you know no one was allowed or yeah. only a couple of people were allowed, and and so, so you know, that even that was just everybody. surreal. Yeah, yeah. So it was really, 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 really uh, strong emotions. Shout out to Chris Bounce. Chris Bounce was there. Um, Psycho Mantis. Them lot was spinning it up. Jesus, I know I'm missing out people, man. But yeah, it was amazing to see um, the love um, that people had for him. Shout out to Drew, producer. Um, yeah, and you know, that that energy there, it was needed. You know, like definitely, like you said, it was like the wake. It was like people needed that. Mm. Um, it's called Pass the Torch, which is the event that he used to put on at Jazz Cafe. Um, shout out to Scandus from the Freshers. He's the one that actually, you know, kind of curated everything mm. and, and got it together. That must have been mad hard work because the amount of people on stage, um, you know, here, there, coming on and off was amazing. I uh, saw Rodney P down there, Black Twang. <laughs> Jeez, bruv. Yeah, it, was, it, it felt good, man. And um, like I said, the energy, you know, I, I, was, I was there till, you know, like one of the last few people outside. Yeah, man. <laughs> Like, you know, it felt like that. It felt like old school where you, you just enjoyed being out there mm. and, uh, you know, chatting it up with everyone, man. So, yeah, it was good to see people, man. Shout out to Sai. I met a guy called Sai as well. He said he might get a radio show on uh, Represents or something. But, yeah, definitely the torch got passed. And I really think that we should be doing that every year, man. We should be representing for Ty uh, every year because, you know, yeah, the, the stuff the guy got up to and... The you know the amount of people I was saying it to um, Apex Zero like the amount of people there that he's helped you know like a lot of us artists that are there up and coming or 
you know, obviously on an independent level, in some form of way, he's he, he always got in touch or he would do like he would post my stuff, but he wouldn't tag me. Mm. But he posts and then he'll say some like real he'll be like, Look, man, support somebody that's doing you know, doing what they love and da-da-da. you know, like saying mm. like it's like he's talking through you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he knows what you're going through, um, doing all this stuff. So yeah, man, like you know, when it comes to selfless in, in terms of promoting uh younger artists than himself, like himself, like people that were coming up as well as his peers as well. It, like he really did it, man. Um, I know that for sure. Wicked, wicked, wicked. That sounds good. Yeah, man. Uh, let me shout out the crew. That was past the torch. Yeah. So shout out to everybody that was down there. And yeah, man, I think we should definitely do it every week. Who's in the building, man? What's going on, brothers and sisters? Right. Rap Shiano P. Shout out to Black Einstein. Shout out to Nicole Kisser. Shout out to Uncle Barry. Oh, yes. Peter Lewis Kisser in the building. Yee. Yeah, ma. See it there? I knew she was there somewhere. Yeah, man. Um, it felt good, man. It felt really good uh, to, you know, sort of gather together and, you know, just share each other's yeah. thoughts and whatnot. Shout out to Turbo Tuberculosis. I know it's top delicious, right? I said to him, <laughs> that's what I said to him last time. I was like, yo, <laughs> I swear I thought I said tuberculosis. Shout out to Tubbs in the building. Yeah. Rumble TV, what's going on? Yeah, man. He says, big up my Stiggy and DNA Kings. Yes, King. Yes, man. All royalty. You know what I mean? Princes and princesses, kings and queens, you're all royalty. That's how we roll as king. That's why, as king, you only do the asking. You only learn. You know what I mean? You ain't got to say nothing else but that. Shout to Blue Fliggy. Shout to Gleam. Woo! You already know. Farmer Beats. <laughs> yeah, man. It's going to be a fun one tonight, brothers and sisters and mother lovers, bitches and bitchettes. All right. Should we get into some of this? First, we've got a... Uh, Housekeeping. Housekeeping. <laughs> Housekeeping. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to DNA, boy. He's always coming up with these little tricks and tricks. You know what I mean? Little, just throws inside you every week. We've always got to do that for you, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. So, uh, what we got? Uh, we got Born Lippy. Yeah. Linda's fan. We got to find out about this holy island. Told you I got to bring the King James version. If I'm really going <laughs> to I got to bring the King James version, man. So I'm going to be down there on uh what is it? September the 3rd. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, September the 3rd, yeah. September the 3rd. I can never see it from here. A big ass screen, but my little ass eyes. I laugh about my eyes, man. <laughs> man. People think I've got some East Asian in me, but uh, it's only when I'm high. Yo, Stanley Odd is going to be down there with me. Imogen Sterling, Jackal Trades. You see the flyer right there. Myself, going to be hitting Born Lippy. It's a poetry stage. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to do that. Got to make sure get everything tight. Mm. You can do it at your own tempo as well. You ain't got to worry about the beat too much, D. Yeah. This is the thing that like, people don't, might not never know nothing about that. Yeah. You know? I, it's, it's a challenge and it's also liberating. Yeah, it is poetry. liberating. Yeah. You can perform more. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're doing it. It's similar yeah. like, you know, back when I was first starting and I was getting into battling, we always did it. It was always on a beat, you know, mm. and it, you know, you could freestyle or you had some things ready or whatnot, but it was always on a beat. So, but now a days they do it a cappella. And with that, there's so much more that you can throw in in terms of performance. Mm. That's why I appreciate it. Even, you know, people be like, oh, yo, they should be rapping on the beat. But I'm like, nah, man. What they've turned it into, what it's become, is real performance right there, man. You could, yeah. you know, almost theatrical sometimes. I so. used to go to a lot of poetry nights and, uh, you know, being white. And, uh, <laughs> and they, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they are. It's like, you're right. You get, you get to feel every word. As they say it. Yeah. 
Mm. Rather than missing lines, you get to really appreciate a line. You get hung. And they can leave a space. You, you can leave word. space for a line. You can leave space for a punchline. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, lot. You know, it's fun. It's a lot different, obviously, than, you know, jumping mm. on stage, screaming your head. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. But at the same time, yeah, I enjoy it, man. So, yeah, catch me down there if you can. Next. Or up there, I should say. Next up. So we got the date now for Bristol, Lost Horizon, Mother Lovers. It's a Thursday night, 30th of September. Uh, I'm going to be down there with Wishmaster and Billy Wiz and Alley Cat. So make sure you come down. Tickets are available from LostHorizonLive.com. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to this. Should be a good crowd down there. Lost Horizon, what's that? One to three, Elton Street, St. Jude's, Bristol. Come down there, bitches and bitchettes. And no, we don't discriminate. That's housekeeping right there. Housekeeping. Housekeepings. Housekeeping. <laughs> All right, so housekeeping with you mother lovers out there. Will you lot blazing on? Blazing on. <laughs> Will you lot blazing on out there, man? Let us know. Let us know. You know what I mean? We always got to find out. What new flavors are out there that we need to get tucked into? You know what I'm talking about. Yo, so I'm looking forward to this one tonight, man. We're going to be talking with a legend from these shores. People know already, man. Shall I, shall Paved I... the way. Yeah, because we got to test out this um, Skype anyway. Shall I bring him in? To make sure. Yeah. Carry on talking. Yeah, a legend, man. This guy, boy, what can I say, man? McBain brother. That's probably one of the first things I heard was sighting off the McBain brothers. And I was like, what? And I, th I think it was, um, yeah, I think it was Mark B who produced the track. I was like, yo, this is crazy. You know, like, ching, it was like that like, cutting through the air, ching, 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 like some crazy rhymes, beats as well. Uh, the beat was off the hook. And uh, yeah, man. And Farms was just going in, like the style that he had. I'd never really, I'd never heard that kind of, you know, that's what it felt like, like hacking away at the beat, ching, ching, ching. Mm. Like his voice piercing through as well. And then the lyrics, it was just like vocabulary that was like, oh, I was like, wow, what does that mean? You know? <laughs> and yeah, so it was, it was ah. and then I started learning more about who Task Force were and then obviously started working um, with the Low Life Camp and then we, we'd done a few shows here and there, man. You know, the amount of work he's put in and the amount of people as well that he's influenced, you can hear, like, you know, Task Force, you can hear farms. It, it's just like, geez, that, that's like Dalai Farmer. <laughs> you got call it a Dalai Farmer, man. So I'm, all right, I'm looking forward to chatting with him and I'm catching gonna, up. I'm going to try and uh, bring him in now then. Yeah? Yeah. I'll try all right. And, and then we got the Mice Investigates coming up as well. We had to find out from some of. The people out there, something uh, really important as, as, oh, as usual. This looks good. Uh, right. Okay. Uh. Uh. Here we go. Right. Time to get the zookies. Okay, okay. Rumbles on the cookies. Can you, yeah. can you hear us? Yeah, man, I can hear you. Oh, you can. Straight what? Straight All right. All right. <laughs> Let me just bring you up. Yeah, to the Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Dalai <laughs> Farmer. <laughs> yes, bro. Yes, bro. I want to reach out. What's going on, What's man? Going on, man? Uh, uh, Hold on. Farmer Jesus. Jesus. You got, you got me, yeah? Yeah, one can set, you hear us? Cool. Oh, yeah, I sound a bit. Yeah, I've got a delay on my screen. Have you got a delay? Yeah. Delay, yeah. Yo, yeah. yo, hey, hey. Yeah, it's gone now, isn't it? No. <laughs> what's what's the best thing for me to do? Listen to the Skype or listen to your YouTube? Listen to the Skype. Listen to the Skype. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, because it might be a delay on the Skype. Yeah, there's a delay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there is, isn't it? Yes, bruv. Hey! So you on some renovating? Yeah, man, look. Jeez. Wow. Did all the floor today. It's a big room, look. 
Oh, that's decent, man. But you can't really see it, man. What are you getting done in there? Everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like a building site. This guy needs to start work. A studio? Like, you know, you putting a studio in there or... No, no, no. This one's sitting with me. <laughs> <laughs> the temptation is there, though. The temptation is there. Yo, it's good to catch up with this brother, man. Been a minute. As uh, usual. Been a minute, as usual. Oh, it's always been a minute. But, bruv, you got me, you got me pumped up, man, when you told me this news. When you well, said... The 10-pound the ten, the ten bag. Jeez. Say that again, bruv. Say that again. Did you say 10-pound bag? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah, when you said, nice, I'm working on another 10-pound bag. What do you say? I was like, what? Like, what? You know what? I wasn't expecting the response, for, at least from the artists. I, I, I expected, like, heads to be fully, fully in. Mm. But, yeah, I, like, I, I've been having to turn people down and then ones like, say, sorry, son. Yeah, oh, serious. Yeah, I know it's man. been like, yeah, because you, 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 what is it? It's like 20 deep or something, isn't it? No, you're 30 deep now, at least. Jeez! Yeah. Serious. But, you know... Um, well, that's, you know, you can carry on then, isn't it? I, I like, it's so... It's uh, not this thing, you know, because I'm looking at myself talking and I'm, I'm behind myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, can I not see that screen, Dan? Uh, <laughs> you, you, the other option is to look at enough. Uh, I could try and bring my into the call, actually. Um, oh, what an ear. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Keep working on it. Ding, just, ding, ding. Let me, just turn, let me just turn you off so you don't look at yourself. Yo. Yeah. All right, that works, that works. Okay, that works, yeah. Yeah. Peter Lewis kisses on the ammo. All right, see. So what's going on, guys, man? Talk to me about Sank. About. about oh, yeah, something. yeah, yeah. So listen, man. Uh, like, I want people to. Um, all right, ten pound bag. Yeah, if people, this is just shit. My people might not never know nothing about, right? The ten pound bag. Like, how did it get started? Because obviously, the Louis Slippers thing is with the band. But where did the idea come from? Were you around when it was happening? You must have been. Um, I, I, you know what? I think I think Louis might have just said, um, "Yeah, can I can I have permission to to put Task Force presents?" And he must have just asked us for a couple of tunes. Mm. And you know, the rest the rest is really history, man. But it was it was really just uh, because he obviously was our DJ, and he was just like, "Look, can I can I bless the Task Force presents bit?" Mm. And it was like, yeah, obviously, Lou, you know what I mean? And, uh, like, they're, they're, uh, they're, ama they're amazing pieces of work, man. They're very, they sound spontaneous. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I can capture that same thing, because when you get older, you start getting a bit finicky and, and picky, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like, it's like a £10 bag album, really, rather than it's not really a mixtape such anymore. Yeah, I I mean, what? So in the sense of like, yeah, because you're saying the sporadicness of people in and out of tunes, and you might three yeah, or four yeah. people on one track, or yeah, 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 yeah. And, and true, true blues are D. I'm not a DJ, so and I ain't got turntables. Mm. Like true, you could just do a little cut and a blend and a, a this and a that. But um, so my project is more. I mean, the vinyl is just going to be like a straight up album, mm. like your track, just um. A heap of other cool artists, Kashmir and all these kind of people. Mm. Um, but then the, the CDs, I'll kind of a, try and return it more to a, you know, there'll be some skits on there. There's a couple people that, that people will be laughing at because they wouldn't expect it to pop up on, on one of my projects. Mm, a couple of celebrities dropping some £10 bag wisdom in them. Yeah, yeah, because it used to have that. I remember that you'd have the skits of like the drunkards and that. Exactly. Like, yeah. Dropping their yeah. knowledge, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Yo. I, I can't go up to, you know, drunks and, and give them a, a pound or, or a can. 
you know what I mean? Because that's what Louis used to do. Louis used to get a, a couple of kind of a kestrel or whatever, some strong beer, and just go and give it to them and say, yeah, do you mind saying a couple of things? And, oh, Louis Slippers, you wanker! And all that business, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how we got all that. I can't really do that now. That is, it looks wrong and it feels a bit wrong as well. You know? Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Well, I mean, I guess then you're shifting it into a new phase. It's been a while anyway. When was the last one? It was like 2008, no? Or something like that. I ain't got, ain't got the fog like, like, yeah, I, I, can't even, so... I can't even tell you what day it was yesterday. Yeah, I no, I hear that. I hear that. But I mean, but what I'm saying is you're taking it into a new phase anyway then by doing it this way. You're still calling it the £10 bag because that's what we all, you know, people are attached to that name. Regardless yeah. of now, it's more like £40, £50 bags. If you, you know what I mean? If you want to import, it's probably like £70, £90 bags. But that's another story, man. We ain't even going to get into that. It's a whole new world. That's what, Bluefoot said, a £100 bag. And that's it's what true. I'm saying. That's for real, for real. When, when, I, when I said to myself, £10 bag, and then I kind of pub, publicly said it, then when I started thinking about inflation, I thought, no, nah, maybe I need to tip on this one. But um, maybe the CD is going to be called £20 bag. Mm. Yeah, you could probably pull that off, man. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a well worth £20, you know what I mean? If not a £20 bag. No, mate, I'll probably, you know what, I'll probably do some dodgy, dodgy dealing stuff and, and chop it up into smaller bags and, and charge twice the price. Like, chop it up into EPs and shit. Exactly. So you've been putting in some work, Farms. Yeah. Putting yeah. in some work. I'm looking at the catalogue now on the band camp. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like, the drive, like, are you just 24-7... Making beats, writing rhymes. No, mate, it, you know, it's a it's a job. It's a job. Yeah. It's it's my it's my you know my my wife, my wife is a social worker. She goes out and does the nine nine to well nine to whenever, mm. and and I, I I try to bring in the the that this way. You know what I mean? Mm. And uh, together we just run the household that way. But it's a job. It's a it's a it's a non stop constant thing where I have to I have to move and that's why it's relentless because it's if I don't make no money then I ain't pay I ain't paying the rent. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and I, I like making music nice so I can't lie, it's it's, it's a gift. Yeah, I'm glad from, you said that man. Yeah, it's a gift from the universe to to sit down and make music and then someone say, Yeah let me have that and I say, Yeah this is it for me and they give me some quids. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Yeah, nah, I mean, you know, you're doing it the right way, bruv, because um, the names that I'm seeing, how did you manage to link up with so many people across the pond like that? Um, first, first and foremost, I, 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 link, I linked up with uh, Mark Conley. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, Mark Conley, yeah. He, he's, he's like an underground legend in, in, in the US. The way he sells his records, like, he, he's not on digital, he's not... You can't get his music anywhere apart from on his website. He's not on social medias, and he's like an enigma. But mm. the guy hangs with people like Jay Z and, and all these kind of big ballers. Do you know what I mean? And uh, mate, he, he used one of my beats. They used a couple more, and after that, everyone everyone wanted a, a beat from me. So mm. yeah, and, and I found I found a, a connection with Rome Streets, and. Um, he, his rise to, to fame and popularity has been really, really cool to see. <clears throat> as you know, Definitely. I'm, of, I'm of a certain vintage, as you can see. Doing it well, bruv. And, um, Look like you could pull a rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> I could pull one out of my beard. <laughs> but, no, um, man, it's got that old school superhero look, man. It's, it's the streaks, like the way the beard works. And the it streaks. Like I got shot by lightning, innit? Yeah, like you got some superpowers, bruv. Definitely. Well, listen, yeah, so when, when, uh, when, when, when just been doing, it's like youth work, that's what I was going to say. It's like, for me, it's like youth work. I used to do youth work, that's how I met my wife, she was my boss. Mm. And, uh, it, it, it feels like that because these guys are, you know, these guys are the same age as my, my oldest son. Mm. So it's like, 
it feels good because yeah, it's a you know it's a way of giving it's, it's a, I feel like I'm giving back something mm. yeah, yeah 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 for sure and yeah. you're giving it back in a good way bro because you know like man the amount, the amount of stuff that I've heard and I'm like right that's farms and, and you know you're like like you said up and coming artist that I've got the skills and you know that because you've come from that, you know what they need. And it's funny that you said um, your wife's a social worker because I was like, oh, works with children. I was like, yeah, so do you. <laughs> like, you're a social worker as well. So yeah, it yeah. makes sense, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, man, just bringing these lot up. Um, and then obviously like moving on to, you're like, all right, we've got to do a 10 pound bag thing. Where did that, what made you want to do that? Because um, I kind of, fell out, not fell out, I don't mean like falling out, like argument, but I fell out of the UK thing a little bit. Mm. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, nice, I'll be honest with you, I, I love American hip hop. Yeah. And that's, that's the way my root, I don't, you won't really find me listening to UK hip hop too much. Mm. No disrespect to any artists or whatever, because no, there's great. fucking, so excuse my language, there's hundreds and thousands of really good UK rappers and producers and whatnot, but it's, it's, I may, I don't even really listen to US hip hop really, but I'm, I'm inclined to listen to US hip hop. Mm. Uh, I felt that, you know, because me and my brother ain't been doing task force and so I'm completely out of the picture with what's going on over here, like, mm. and, you know, I know all the old heads, SI, U, Mice, and, yeah, so I just thought, you know what? On a nostalgic journey, I could just, yeah, maybe I could see what, what can crack. And you know what, I've had such a good time reconnecting with like people like yourself, mm. Jess, uh, Essa. Like, it was so nice to see these guys yeah, like, right. in the flesh. And we should do a video for your one as well. We just need to Jeez. find someone who's ready to do like. It's mad because everyone everyone wants to do it. Mm. The video, the, the film, whatever you call these people, video videographers, yeah, videographers. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the videographers want to do it. The artists want to do it, and, and now I'm like, yeah, well, let's let's do this, man. Mm. And it's a it's, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, man. So I'm I'm happy. It it was just nostalgia that drove drove me in that direction. To be honest, because I'm a bit out of the picture, you know what I mean? No, I hear that. I hear that. You know what? To be honest, I feel I feel like, in a way, you know, what you're saying about being out of the picture, a lot of people kind of felt like that anyway. Like, we've all kind of grown up and then you've had to carry on with your life regardless of whether the music is part of it or not. Um, mm. But then when, you, you know, you're at a place where it's like, oh, I've got time to do this now. I can actually focus on this and really go for it. In a way, I think a bunch of people, in a sense, had that same kind of feeling. And you, so you bringing it together like this, um, mm -hmm. I think is like giving everyone that form of nostalgia. Like, yo, you know, you know, I bumped into you last night, Tommy Evans, <laughs> Tommy Evans, Jazz Cafe, outside Jazz Cafe. I was at, um, you know, Ty's memorial thing, yeah. um, past the torch. Yeah, and I see Tommy Evans, and it was just chatting, and I was like, yo, and started reminiscing about, you know what I mean, that whole era, and that we we're, were here, there, everywhere, bumping into each other at different gigs or whatnot, or, you know. And, and so, yeah, like, in terms of you, when you dropped the £10 bag thing, it brought that energy to to me. And so I, I was like, I'm sure other people are feeling the same way, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's funny, it's funny you say Tommy Evans, because... I can't remember what happened, man, but it, we, we just kind of clashed somewhere along the line. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it happens. Was, that's why you were bringing it up. I thought you were going for a cheap... A cheap oh, no, no, no. Thing. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> that always happens, man. Now, uh, now I know that, though. What? Nah, Joe, Joe, Joe. Nah, man. Tommy Evans, you know. I know I said some funniness on some record about him, but... Yeah, I'm sure. Whatever, innit, man? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, yeah, you know how it is, man. We've all said we've all said little bits about someone here and there. You know how it yeah. goes, but boy, people are excited about this um ten pound bag thing, bruv. Shout out to DJ Lock. Uh yeah, there's a few heads in the building, man. So, all right, can you drop any names? Who's who's on the ten pound bag or have we gotta wait? 
to find out. I know it's on Revolve Records, right? It's coming out on Revolve. Yeah, well, the the the, the, the vinyl. vinyl is on Revolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the vinyl, the vinyl has 12, 12 tracks. I'm just gonna try and find. Uh, I'm gonna try and find a playlist or something. Mm. I can't remember what where I put. <laughs> but yeah, my, bro. My, you should tell the people about your track on it because your track's going to be on the vinyl. Woo! Bruv. We'll say, I'm it telling nice, you. Is it was such a surprise that you chose that beat. For real? Yeah, because I don't think anyone's heard you on a beat that slow. That slow? Nah, probably not, you know. I, I think... think... It's, not double, it's not doubled up. Nah. I just nah. went... It, it felt like, you know, locked in a in a dark cave. Like, it's one of them sort of beats, and all you got is candlelight and some chalk. And you got to write on the walls. It's a sensation, that track. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, and I think I was probably thinking the same thing as you. Like, yeah, I haven't really done much of this kind of style to this kind of tempo, and, you know, and let me just get dark with it. That's but, dark. It's real. Yeah, but, you, bruv, do you know how hard it was to choose which beats? <laughs> Fuck it. He's got that's, styles, that's man. That's different that you chose that one, and I'm glad you chose that one. Oh, bless, man. Yeah, honoured, bro. I'm oh, looking forward to getting the next one done, man. Trust. Is oh, is ten um, pound bag. Is a thingy. This this is some of the names. Axel Holy. Mm. He's on. The, he's on. The, um, he's from Bristol. Mm. Holy. Ritterson Kane. <laughs> yeah. That's a wicked name, isn't it? You know, I don't know, and I always make a fool of myself. I don't know how to say this guy's name. C-L-B-R-K-S. C-L-B-R-K-S. Maybe some of your peoples know. I can't. Mm. And Sleazy F Baby. Mm. Uh, Sleazy F Baby. Is that weird? Yeah, uh, that's DRS from Manchester. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Esa, yeah, yeah. Uh, Genesis Elijah. Jeez. Illaman. Jess. Oh, Juggernaut, Kashmir, Oof. Keller, Harry Shotter, <sighs> Lunacy, Mongo and Smith, My Stiggy, Jesus, uh, Havan from uh, Orifice Volgatron, if you want, yep. Red Con from uh, Bristol, Slim Pappy, Smell It and Piff, Rocking Snow, hell. Snowy from up there, Sunny Jim, Tony D. Wishmaster, the list goes on, man. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people there. <laughs> Yo! Yeah. It's a good caliber. Yeah, people, man. Uh, yeah, man. It's a good mixture as well, man. I love that. Jeez. Mm. Farms ain't yeah. playing, boy. All right, so we, we haven't got a date yet, but videos, we've seen, you know what I mean, Soweto Kinch and Jess, see a little video going on there recently. Yeah. Shout out to Jack Diggs. Um... And uh, so uh, you said there's going to be vinyl. Is it CD as well? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to run. Mm. I think I'll probably do the vinyl, then do the CD of the vinyl. But I, I was thinking not to put it on digital, you know, like like on the streams. Mm. Just, just, just again from the nostalgic point of view. Love I that. thought to myself, why don't I just make it how Loon used to make it? Because that's how you make legendary music. You mm. make it unobtainable unless you go and buy it. Mm. You know, I'm sure people will still burn it and take it off here, there or wherever. But if you want it, you can just buy it, innit? Yeah, if you get, you know, the official product. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you did back in the day. You know what I mean? You go and get CD, our price, HMV. Unwrap that, you know. Sometimes, yeah. Anyway, I won't get into it. But when I was younger, sometimes I used to buy like two CDs and that. I know a man used to do that. You buy two CDs, one <coughs> album you're like, eh. one album you definitely want, the other one you're like, eh. and then you take it home mm. and then you just record the eh album on the <coughs> tape, and then you return it for another album that you're like, yeah, I want this album. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
that was back in the day. But, but, you but was, yeah, you were stuck with albums back then as well because you just paid money for it and you had to get to lo- know it. I think with the downloading stuff, people just don't bother getting to know things. They'll, they'll, they'll download the whole album just for one track. Yo, you forget that you have that shit because yeah. it's just imagine a CD is like, yo, bruv, mind my CD. You know, yeah, you might yeah, step on yeah, it, yeah. sit on it or whatever. This yeah. is just like a, a, an image, an icon on your desktop or whatever, or on your phone. So yeah. you're not even, you forget. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? hmm? We lost something, right? Yeah. Do you think? Definitely. Definitely, Definitely man. It's lost value for sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where now it's t- people are excited about streams and you know, views and whatnot. But it's lost, it's lost like the worth, you know, like the, what, what is music worth to people now? Pe- music used to define my life, mm. but I don't think it's like yeah. that now, really. I think that people just, you know, they don't have like specific genres that they're into so much. Whereas like we had just groups and that was it. You just list, you was into that genre. You know, you might've stepped outside of it a little bit, but mainly you was into that one thing. But it's a I little th- bit more fluid now, I think. Now you've got like rappers in tight jeans. Yeah, but I, I think that it Singing. was fluid back in the day. People were still into different types of music, but because it was physical and it was something that you could lose or break, or it mm. meant more. It was wor- like you're saying, it's worth more. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now, it's not even anything physical. It's no, just yeah, something you turn yeah. your thing on and then click this, or you tell Alexa, play blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not there anymore. It's not, re- yeah. like, real. It's not, let alone, you know? Yeah. Um, I see, I see, sorry, I see someone, is it Gleam? Mm. Gleam yeah, Gleam. Gleam just said, uh, oh. it's, not, it's not lost. It's not lost. It's a new generation. It mm. is a new generation. Um, and, and so, I, I mean, just the, the, the sort of thing of like tunes can come and go a lot easier now than they used to. Yeah. Yeah, but on, on the strength of on the strength of the listener, right? If you're the listener, mm. then the world the world is your oyster. Mm. It's, 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 there's no better time than than now. Yeah, no, 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 or, for sure. Like, oh yeah, I want to hear blah blah blah's album. You don't have to go on none of them funny sites. You don't have to go on LimeWire. You don't have to do any funky business. Mm. You just go on Spotify, you go to the band camp, you do whatever you need to do, you go on YouTube, and you can listen to it within the next two or three minutes. Mm. Right? That's cool from a listener's point of view, and I get that. What I'm, I, I'm imagining that's what Gleam is coming from that point of view. Mm. But for the artists, something like an artist, if you're a new, new artist, like you're young, right? There's nothing more easy now as a young artist to say, boom, I just recorded a track, yeah, let me get on DistroKid or whatever and put it up onto Spotify and all these other different things, right? That's Mm, easy. mm. Right. But those excited young people, they're not thinking about it any further than, yeah, my tune's on Spotify. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but... People who are serious about doing it, and I ain't knocking anybody for putting up their stuff, obviously not. But people who are trying to make a, a living out of it, there's more to it than just, yeah, it's a new generation. It's a new generation of what well, artists not getting paid. Mm. <laughs> with great, with, with great power people... comes great responsibility. That's the thing, is that you've got the power to download everything, you know, but you've got to be responsible. You've got to remember, without actually funding the artists you don't really get any art right yeah. if everything is free yeah then no one's getting paid that's right that, that, that's simple straightforward stuff right that's yep. it yeah and and i get it I, I i'm all about everyone having access that's wicked but we still got to have a way and i know there is ways before anyone starts saying you could go on bank camp yeah <laughs> but if it's you know there's, there's got to be a serious conversation somewhere down the line because we're all just gonna like they're, they're, they're trying to do that to us anyway artists musicians and all the rest of these you know they don't like the fact that we can make money mm, Mike, so you, can go to, you can go to your gig and and the guys at the end of it is gonna bosh that in your hand and you're gonna say thank you very much and you're gonna go mm. home and you've got a fat wad mm-hmm. they don't like that yeah no. and they've been trying for years to stop us having that so we gotta yeah. be careful with 
you know, we we, we got to be careful. It's it's all good. Have have the music up, have the music up, but we got to find ways for artists to make a pound still. Exactly. Yeah. And what you know, the thing about it, it being a new generation as well is that's fair enough. But then they're also this new generation are also getting messed. They they're not getting what they deserve for the work they're putting in. You know, and they're getting on top of that. We can see how they're getting treated in a way which is totally wrong. You know, but it's almost like that's how the game is played. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. If I if I was younger, if I if I was a if I was a kid, if I was fifteen, mm. and I knew that I could put my music up on a digital platform that the world could access, you're damn right I'd be doing it. Yeah, yeah. I'd be doing it. Yeah, it's because it's instant. It's, at, well, come on, man! It's like what we in in my day, in your day, in our day. We we would have to get on a bus and go to a club yeah. to pick up a mic so that people knew that you existed. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. yeah. Now a dude is sitting. He ain't been at his house ever, and and he's sitting at his computer and he posts his, his thing up and does a funky little dance. And he becomes a multi-million megastar, and that's the lottery. <laughs> yeah, right. and he's awkward. Yeah, and he's awkward. He can't exactly. even really talk that well either. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's even that's crazier. Lot, that's lottery business. That's that's like it's fair enough. So we all get hooked on this lottery ticket that it does exist. Yeah, but, but have you got the funny little dance and all the rest of it? Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> We're probably a bit too old for that, mice. But. Like, oh no, Mice has got a lot of funny little dance. Oh, yeah, man. man. Like, Bro, I can awesome. floss. Don't. Yeah, if anyone wants to floss off, that's all I'm saying. Like, man can floss. Like, I tell all the youths. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to floss off with me. Like, trust don't, me, don't Uncle. Don't really see flossing, Mice, I can already imagine it, and it's not a good look. <laughs> No, bruv. Oh, trust me, I'll hold it down, man. Here, watch the video shoot. You know, I'll show you that joke. I'll be flossing on that slow ass beat, boy. It'll be a dark, slow beat, me flossing, like candlelit cave. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, so you see the change anyway. In terms of like, because people always ask me as well, like younger cats, they're always like, okay, so what do you see? What are the biggest changes? you've seen then from your day to now? Um, just like, yeah, probably the, 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 the point of when we started doing what we were doing, there was no, there was no internet. I'm sure it was in being invented and it, but it wasn't madly accessible mm. to the point where it's like you could upload your thing, like make a beat and by the end of the day it's on some kind of platform. I don't think that I mean, that's amazing, man. That's like, wow. It's like, I'm still yeah, really excited like by being able to put a bit of music on top of a video, fling it on Instagram, and then at the end of the day, this many people have listened to it, and this many people have talked about it. And I, I find that that's gratifying to me. Mm. What changed is before, like I just said before, like we would be traveling, right? Yep. Maestro, MI5, Jargon, you guys, mm. be, you'd be getting on buses. If you were lucky, you'd have someone who drove drive a car. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 for real. Yeah, and, and we would have to get ourselves down the road. We'd have to get out of our house and be somewhere and then try our hardest to get on that microphone that might not even be open. Yeah. You might not even get a chance. And you're not even thinking about getting, like, how you're getting home. You deal with that after. After effect, yeah. But that, to, to me, at least with the music thing, that's, that's, that's changed. Because now, um, what do you have to do? You don't, you don't, you don't even have, I don't come out of my house. I come mm. out of my house to go and get, like, supplies and then, and then come back. <laughs> when, the, when, the kids, when the kids are at school, then I'm taking them to school, going to pick them up. Yeah. But, Further than that, that's why I was interested in your question. What, what was it about the... Uh... Oh, the Mice Investigates. Yeah, what, what was that, the so, lockdown? Business? Yeah, it was basically, the, what Mice Investigates this week is what was the most valuable thing you've learned during the lockdown? Um, yeah, so for me, I think I learned that um, I should probably go out more because 
it didn't really affect me. It's not it kind of like this is this is, I don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, man. I, and the, the other thing is, I feel like farmer, them man were already they were warning us about this shit. When people talk about yo, the music was telling us about these these times coming from back then. Task force were, you know, farms was definitely letting us know. You know what I mean? So you're yeah. already like, ah, here we go then. Yeah, <laughs> just but chilling. The, but the thing is, it was the See, same here that we we. <laughs> Because we're all, it's a studio here. Mm. And so we just carried yeah, on yeah, yeah, just yeah. going to the studio mm. and seeing the people in the studio and they was all carrying on doing the same thing. Yeah, so yeah. nothing changed. It if like... anything, it was like Black Einstein said, welcome to our world. Yeah, you know, That's what yeah. everyone else is experiencing, what it's been like for musicians. Is <laughs> like you're always locked in a studio <laughs> yeah, on real. your own, in the dark, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And we love that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, yo, <laughs> whatever, man. Like when, when you got shop smiling. People, people come in the house and it's like, oh, you, you're messing it up. Go, 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 go. So it's, uh, it's one of them ones, man. I mean, what have I learned really? Um, you got, you got, there's a lot going up here, isn't it, for everyone? There's a lot going up here when you're left, when you're left to uh, your own. deal with your own mind. And I suppose that's, in a way, that's why I'm thankful uh, for what I do because mm. I'm on my own all the time anyway. So mm. I'm always sitting and I'm all, I've always got my own thoughts and without much interruption from anybody else. I, I, don't par, I don't par with anybody. I don't sit with anybody. I don't build a beat and send it to anybody. Do you know what I mean? So I'm always just bouncing off myself. So in that way, I suppose I've learned that I'm probably my best mate. Mm. <laughs> I like that, man. I'm yeah. probably my best mate for real, boy. <laughs> so and that, and that's the thing; it's calm, isn't it? You're not, you're not. There's no anxiety when you're able to be by yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me, myself, and I. Yeah, mm -hmm. not not for me, not for me personally. No, but I, I can I can see the effect. I can see yeah, the no, effect. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's having it's having a real serious effect on people's minds and, and yeah. that they haven't got the support system that they're used to or whatever it is they need to get by it is uh, when it's taken from them or whatever if there's less of it than they're used to it seems to uh, like even performers man I see performers begging it man mm. like they're, they're begging to be noticed this, like, not necessarily in the rap world or whatever but like at the start of the lockdown in the first year or whatever mm. The entertainment scene and, and the ladies and, the, and they just going on wild. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, hold on, what? You ain't been on TV for five minutes and all of a sudden, like, you're doing mad stuff to, to like, get a ratings or, like, have people notice you. And, like, Instagram has gone crazy with yeah. all these people doing these crazy things. And it's all just to get noticed. It's yeah. like, well, in that sense, it's really drawn out the, the poisonous side of, celebrity and i mean we already we already knew that it's like yeah, shit. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah 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 now yeah that nasty cd and you see what's behind it is just for them to feed their ego constantly feeding and feeding and feeding on yeah. being noticed and it's like it's bare sick that's and you see that with normal people as well it's like People are dressing different now. It's like as soon as everyone was allowed back out, no one's got any clothes on, and it's, yeah. it's madness. Yeah, it's mad. desperate, right? Desperate. I, 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 I do. Desperate for what, mice? Desperate for what exactly? You know, the thing is, is that it's like the goal that's been set for these sort of people in their mind. This is my opinion. In their mind, the goal that's been set is to become famous, is to become known, is to look good, and and so their idea of looking good is I want to look like that. I want to look mm -hmm. like that. They're not happy with what they see in the mirror because of how, you know, and this, in my opinion, it's the programming through schooling, through TV, through, all, you know, the entertainment and whatnot. And that ha has given them the, the idea that this is what they should go for. This is what, oh, this is what I should work hard for. This is what I should pay my taxes for. And, and you know, so it's all wrong and it's all messed up in that way. And that's why you got, in my opinion, that's why you've got, this back and forth with people wherever we are, whoever, somebody's got some kind of argument, you know what I mean? Rather than like there's peace, it's some form, and, and this has made it even more volatile, obviously being uh, on, your, on your own and not being able to handle it as well. 
as you could if you yeah. if you you know you knew yourself like entertainment we was talking about this the other day entertainment enter in tain is to hold you know like it's even like linked to tain like uh french for tin foil tain and then ment your mind mentis your mind so it's entered and holds your mind in some form or way messes you up and you don't even you know they don't realize it but the goals that you set for yourself are what this screen has told you you know is broadcasting to you and th and now they're all lost so and to us it's like whoa like you know some some of us are lucky we managed to you know see other parts of the world that made us realize okay not everything's the way it, you think it is and then you know things start clicking you're like wow this tv what's with this program i'm like why do you watch that you know what i mean the, why do you wear that why do you literally listen to some that? of us just didn't put the telly on and that's you know i mean to some extent that's yeah. all it's down to is when you don't watch all this stuff all the time yeah you you sort of drift away from it all and you start to find who you are rather than because you're being marketed to all the time at every level all yeah, the time it doesn't matter what you're watching doesn't matter what yeah not even adverts just normal films tv show everything they're trying to define you and once you step away from that and stop letting other people define who you are you start yeah. sort of finding yourself really yeah and that's when you can smell the bullshit but through the screen you can smell that shit yeah. <laughs> do you know what i mean and so yeah but um you know i think as long as there uh, there are like people like, like us out here that can kind of steer people the right direction even if they don't get it at least you know in some mm. form of way then you know we're trying man shout to harry love in the building there's a few people popped in shout to harry love uh who else is there charlie zoo shout to richard henry yeah your ma's in the building people shouting you out farms man there's a lot of love in this uh chat room bruv <laughs> definitely man shout to barry o o technology yeah so it, it's a funny world now man but i think um it, you know in terms of um this lockdown thing definitely like you're saying realizing uh how lucky we are you know to be able to have something that we can focus on that's not you know so we're not getting clustered with mm. whatever's going on. and it's just very normal for us to do that has been a blessing for sure um yeah, and so that that's one thing I learned as well, man, for sure. Is um and now it's kind of put a you know, we had a chat with Blade last week. And um you know, he was talking about well, 2 weeks ago now. He was talking about, you know, things that need to happen within the scene obviously over here for it to be a bit more solid and and work with a better flow. Do you know what I mean? Especially when there's so much talent, like we know how much talent is out there. It's ridiculous now. But it, it still feels like it's fragmented in terms of, you know, areas within it that have got the structure that are like, you know, they're making it work the right way. Um, and so that that for me, even coming, you know, we're, I guess we're coming out of lockdown or whatever, but it's made me feel like, all right, now is time to really go in even crazier. Do you know what I mean? And, and so that's another thing that I think I'm, I'm getting from all of this as well. Um, you know, getting past all the stress and the worries and whatnot is really about focusing about the shit, uh, you know, on the things that you love, not the things that they're throwing at you to make you t turn in love with it. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, you see what the bullshit is now. Like you're saying, the amount of celebrities that have come out in these recent months saying this, that, and the third, and, it, and it's weird. It's weird to even see it with a lot of it, but at least you know now. You know what I mean? <laughs> at least you know. It's like the Truman Show's it's real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real, boy. Yeah, man. Heads in the building. Yeah, we gotta get Harry on, definitely, man. I'm gonna catch up with you, bro. We gotta get Harry on to chat, chat the chat as well. It's good to catch up with people as well, man. Like, that's one of the other things, you know. I, I, bro, I'm missing doing gigs. Mm -hmm. You know, in the back room. Even like you're like right, I go out for a blaze. Even just being outside, random drunk person, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, like, all of that, you miss it. You're like, yo, shit, is that gonna happen again though? Jeez. Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Do you want to have a quick break? Yeah, should we have a Kit Kat? Yeah. All right, let's do that. You right with that? You right with that, farms? 
Yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, man. We're going to have a little break. We'll come back. You lot get your cups of tea on. Roll something. You know, do it. Put the washing on. Whatever it is you need to do. <laughs> you can watch this. We're going to come back on the other side with some mice investigates and more with Farmer G's. Farmer Genius. Dalai Pharma. What is it you got now? It's Farmer Psychedelic Attesson. Jeez. <laughs> This guy's creative was a mother lover, boy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, more saying the contribution to the UK scene is unreal. Ooh, jeez. Farms, man. You might you might want to mute, lot out here, mute your mic, Farms, while we while we go to the break, just in case you're uh, oh, yeah. live. Uh, how do I do that? How do I do that? There should be oh, a, yeah. a little picture of a mic on the, on your thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Stand DNA on I'll the I'll message boards, you when we're when we're when we're coming back in anyway. All right. Uh, we'll be back Let's soon, go. bitches and bitches. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Welcome, mother lovers. This is Maestro Investigates. Today, we're at the Wimbledon Village Stables, and I'm gonna investigate horse riding. What's the idea behind these? Are they specially made for horse riding, I guess? Yeah, yeah, they've got a special heel. It's important for when you're riding so that your foot doesn't slip all the way through the stirrup. Ah, yeah, you don't want to get caught in the stirrup. Yeah, I've heard yeah. about that. Yeah, okay, so, so the stirrup bit just goes your underneath your foot. So we're putting the stirrup on the chudders. Is that right? Chaps. Chaps. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the chaps on the... You're putting your chaps over the top of your trousers. And next thing, we need a hat. Really, really important. Yeah, like a um, sort of builder's helmet. Sort of, yeah, like a safety helmet. Okay? Yeah. So I just put this one on. This is a guess. But they've got forehead. to be quite tight. So yeah, my forehead's kind of. But as it far fit down as yeah? it'll go. Okay? Right. right, just do that with your head. Yeah, so that's good because it's not moving. Yeah, see how mine isn't moving either. Yeah, yeah. Because if it moved, then that would mean that it would be too big, okay? Now you can meet Inky. Inky. Inka man, that's the horse you'll be Inka riding. Inka man. Yep. <laughs> okay, so this is Inky, all ready and waiting. Ah, oh, see, I was kind of, yeah. Hey, Inky. <laughs> I was a bit worried about the size of the horse. So with yeah, the horses, um, you know, can you tell what they're thinking and stuff? Yeah, like, definitely. They've all got their own personality. Yeah. Yeah, he thinks he's the boss of the stables. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. Come up the steps. Yeah. And I want you to put your, come on to the top one. Yeah. That's it. Put your left hand here. My left hand yeah, here. Just holding it there. Yeah. And then your right hand on the saddle, that's fine. Yeah. And then your left foot into the stirrup. Into the stirrup. Yeah. Just stay there for two seconds. I'll hold the other side. Yeah. And then three little bounces and leg over. Swing your right leg over. My well, right leg over, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, was it? All right. So one, yeah. two, three. Well done. So what's the best way to make sure I don't like lose balance or fall off? I don't think it'll happen, I really don't. But okay, it... Keep sitting in that lovely position yeah, yeah. that you're in now. <laughs> yeah. Sit really... equal so you can feel both your seat bones, sit tall, keep your shoulders back and you'll work with the motion of the horse. Yeah. Quite therapeutic actually. Alt. Look at that. Horse crossing. Yeah. Okay, off we go. I want you to keep hold of your reins in your left hand. In the left hand, yeah. Yep. As they are. And I want you to just do some big circles with your arms like this. That's it. So you keep nice and relaxed. Oh, you're not tensed up. Yeah, yeah, because you yeah. can notice, didn't it, that last bit I was yeah, a, yeah, it started freezing up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Relax. I need to get you right hand, reach your 
reach down and touch Elastica. Okay. You want me to fall over, okay. that's what you want me okay. to do. Go Alright, get my right hand. Touch your left toe. That's it, slow. Go and reach down. Oh, my sack, my sack. Oh, I got it, I got it. Oh, uh, whoa. Yeah, just watch your head. Try and lean forward like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That'll make more sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeehaw. Come on, boy, let's go. Oh, oh. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it feels good. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. So I've always wondered, uh, why don't um, people ride zebras in Africa? They're a wild animal. They're wild? Yeah. So they haven't been... Um, They've never been tamed. Tamed. Yeah. So w are these classed as domestic? Yeah, these are domestic animals, like your dogs and your cats. You wouldn't have a tiger at home, would you? And they're a big cat. Yeah, that's true. Well, not unless you... Uh, well, it depends who you are. Mike Tyson or something yeah, like that, isn't it? Halt. Right leg round. Right. Big kick round and slide up slowly. That's it. And slowly, that's it. Yeah! <laughs> Much easier than we thought. <laughs> yeah. Just pop Inky back in his back. Okay, Inky. My nuts have tucked into me. I just got to like push them out. <laughs> It's a bit harsh on the kishkis, isn't it? You can get tucked in, man. Not yeah, I think it went all right. Good. So these are just to wake them up a bit. Well, not really, no. No, it's not really. No. So if I was like... No, it's not sorry. to wake them up. No? <laughs> no you don't need to know what... I don't work here. They're only for... Uh, good riders carry the whip. Oh, good riders carry the whip. Yeah. All right. One day, when I grow up, I want to be able to carry this around. Um, so how long have the stables been here? There were stables here since 18, the end of the 18 sort of 80s, I think. Mm. They were part of the park. And there were hundreds of people came here to learn to ride, even, you know, way back then. Mm. It was very, very popular. They used to have, um, I think, 30 horses here and then 40 horses on Church Road. You know, a tremendous amount of horses, considering what the population would have been mm. yeah, in those days. And mainly men learned to ride. Mainly men. Whereas now it's mainly women. Why is that? I don't know. Not enough men do it. Why don't men do it? Uh, do you tell I think me? I know why, actually. <laughs> yeah. You kind of get tucked in in places where you, uh, yeah. You, you know, you've got to shake yourself out again. But, yeah, I mean, you could get, <laughs> if you get used to it, though. Yeah. I think. But, you know, I, I have some men that ride, and they ride out, and they're just surrounded by ladies all riding. They say, they say why don't more men do this? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, You're true. riding out with kind of ten lovely ladies, you know? So there you have it. That was an episode of Maestro Investigates. Horse riding on Spine TV. For more information on Wimbledon Village Stables, just go to www.wvstables.com and you can find out a whole lot more stuff that you might not never know nothing about. I'm off to investigate something else now, my beloved. So see you next episode. So how does it feel to be ridden? Yeah. How often do you get ridden? When you get ridden, right, you're back in. Do you feel like riding yourself? Yeah, that was me investigating horse riding. Kiski damage was at about sixty <laughs> percent. I didn't sit down again for the next two weeks. Put it that way. You know what I mean? I had to do a lot of hop. Hot baths. <laughs> <laughs> Just crouching tiger in the hot bath, boy. <laughs> then cold, yeah, cold showers. Try my best to shrivel up as much as I could, but the kiss keys were damaged. Out. <laughs> I don't know how the dudes horse ride. You got to tuck yourself in some form of way before you horse ride, boy. Mm, you got to strap yeah, up. Oof, that shit will catch there. you. <laughs> Yo, 
We're back again, my beloved. Some shit you might not never know nothing about. I want to shout out all the people locked in right about now. Big up to the crew, Yamar, O-Tech. Shout out to Tubalicious, Nicole Kisser, Mr. Green in the building, Peter Lewis Kisser, Rumble, what's going on? Richard Henry, Harry Love, Barry O, all the crew in the building right now. Gleam, we got none other than the one and only Farmer G with us tonight, boy, and it feels good. Yo, F yo. Farms. Yo. How did you get started, like, making... Was it Task Force first or Berry Crew first? Which was which? Or you were solo? Or how did you get started with doing this? Uh, it was, it was kind of like me and uh, me and my brother, like just naturally, yeah, we did we did everything together. We did our rapping, blah blah blah. Secondary school, I linked up with Intense, and um, uh, Mike Skiller, and and we formed Mike Very Skiller. Crew. Yeah. And uh, Skinny at the, pretty much the same kind of time. Skinny and Mongo, and my brother. Um, created the mud fam and then we kind of amalgamated here and there we did mud limbs and you know the story yeah, man. the story's pretty well documented isn't it mud limbs man not, not well enough we... jeez yeah for That's real the, the whole story needs telling at some I point to do a film of it really yes. there should be like a, 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 a i don't know who would play me but so, like they should do, they should do a a, a a whole kind of episode on on how it was there's a lot of fun that went down yeah man uh, doing all of that. A lot of stories that can be told that yeah. maybe shouldn't they ever be said, actually. The Madlands days, boy, that was a whole era as mm. well, man. Madlands and hitting that open mic, boy, jeez. If, if, you, if you were around at Powerhouse when Madlands was in Powerhouse, mm. then, like, I consider you to do to be like the, the true hardcore backbone fan base. Yeah. Because the people, the people who knew us from there is uh, like, man, that's a journey to go on, man. Because that's like, I was coming to uh, Power, Powerhouse was in Finsbury Park. I used to live with uh, Remus Aaron. I would call him Aaron. Hmm. I, I used to live with Aaron's uh, mum and Aaron in... Um, Harvest Estate, Headless Horseman on Harvest Estate. Ah. Which, yeah, so North London guys will know So Bell Centre and Finby Park and all that. And I used to run down to Powerhouse, like leave Aaron there with his mum and used to do this whole Mudlands thing with Skinny and mm. Intense and man, like they were, they were very rough and basic beginnings mm. but um, everything's everything kind of well you know it, the road the road was long but everything sprouted from that place that's where mark b came one night and we had the the talk of joining up and making a group and we came up with the name task force this is where well, mudlands is like synonymous with that whole thing that 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 movement that came from after that and then you know you guys started doing Kung Fu, there was the freeze, there, there, there was all sorts of different things that kind of flipped and flipped mm. and flipped after them, them events. It, it was a deep time, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Profound time, man. Profound time. Uh, a um, there was a lot going on as well. My, there's so, like 12, I'll tell you, one of my, one of my favourite memories of uh, Mudlands uh, was... 12 Stones. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember 12 yeah, Stones. Yeah, of course, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, Hackney's 12... finest, boy. 12 Stones. Of course. Abs absolutely Hackney's finest. Absolutely, like, the style, the the rhyme flows. Mm. Like, when I listen to it now, I kind of, I can I can kind of join the dots of what they might have been listening to. It was a, it was a bit Wu Tangy, a bit Wu Syndicate, and there, there was those kind of elements. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, what... What always strikes me about 12 Stone, um, especially when they came to Mudlands, is we knew who 12 Stone were. Obviously, they're not far from where we all were. Mm. And, um, they were a big crew, and we were a big crew. And obviously, we thought we, thought we were the, the dog's danglies, yeah? Mm. 
But when 12 Stone came and performed at Mudlands, like, I just thought to myself, shit, that they, they were so good. And it was one of them, every now and again, you just get a little humbling experience. Yeah. Same with MCD. When you used to see MCD perform back in the day, yeah, someone talking about Apricot Jam, yeah, man. Them, all, them, all them ones. Yeah. I used to see, I, I saw MCD perform once in Dingwalls and it was jam. Mm. Before the new wave rap fans and, and it was jam mm. with heads. Mm. And wall to wall. And MCD came on and it was it was when he was on his political, yeah. uh, you know, he was he was all about the government and... and the Queen and... Because and... he went different, he went a little bit different after, innit, MCD? He kind of yeah. went... A little bit like jingly jangly with, mm. with gold chains and yeah. banners and all this kind of business. But he rapped one night at Dingwalls and everyone was just dumbfounded. Like it was so powerful that the whole room was just, some people were like on the verge of tears. Mm. It was just it was such a massive impact emotionally that. Some of these guys, like they're the, to me, they're the early innovators. Yeah, yeah, I know it goes further back, it goes miles back. But when you're talking about powerful voices that resonate and shake still, as long as there's people about with the recordings and you can tell people about it and the stories are there, mm. people like MCD, people like 12, 12 Stone, and Man. they're like, who talks about 12 Stone? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. It yeah, is. man. Yeah. Stone Age, the album Stone yeah, Age. Yeah, the Stone Age. Yeah, that CD, boy. Jeez. Uh, wow, you're no bringing problem. back some memories, man. Every I remember moment, that. If, if, Strap if, 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 run. If you're listening or whatever, it, that album is on YouTube. You mm. can come off here now or after, type in 12 Stone, Stone Age, listen to the album, Ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah. You, you don't hear it. But then you can hear the, the lineage from Hackney, mm. from, from from them guys to Clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, when we when we start digging deeper yeah. and we, we listen to, like, these guys were there. They, they solidified that Hackney flow. They, mm. they, they were the bosses at it. And then Clash, Clash had this thing and... But you can hear the lineage. And, mm. But it's fascinating. It's fa all these things are just, they're fascinating if, if the story is told. If the story ain't told, then nobody ever gets the no. No one gets and the it, no. Yeah, it's, it's lost, isn't it? It's yeah, lost. this is the sad thing about the scene because, um, you know, obviously, and it's not even just us that are within it, that, you know, we know everyone and whatnot, but people even from outside are like, wow, the talent within this scene you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. How comes I ain't heard this before? You know, all that kind of talk. But then the fact that, you know, it's like, I've, you, you probably get the same thing. People are like, yo, I've just discovered you. Da, 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 da. And you're like, right. This, these many hours deep into this and people are still discovering you. But that's what it's like when, you know, you've got a scene that's like this where it's not, you know, solid enough that there's a continuous flow of things happening. Um, but at the same time, I still enjoy that. I still enjoy the fact that I can touch new people here, there and everywhere because of the fact I'm so independent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. What, I mean, you do you do your thing with the band. What's the band called, Mass? Oh, the um, Smokey Joe and the Kid. Yeah, like that's huge, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that it's, obviously we have to work the angles that we can in it. You've got to be smart about what you're doing. Um, and same likewise for you, man. Like like I'm saying, the amount of stuff you're putting out, I, I see, and you're saying it's work. That's exactly what it is. You yeah, know, exactly. um, for me, the live thing is where it it works better for me. You know, that's where I make uh, my living more yeah. than when I'm putting out music. So yeah. therefore, I should make sure that's constant, so I can just put out the music when I want. You know, it's not. Um, yeah, we've all got to work it the way that we can, um, but. You know, I, the thing is, and like I was saying, going back to Blade again, because this stuff hit me so well, is that there's still, you know, like you doing the £10 bag. There's people putting out music left, right and centre. So there's still, 
things happening. It's just making sure that everyone knows about it. People that should know that wouldn't know because it's not getting enough airplay. You know, like the radio stations. We don't get no play on the radio stations. Unless you've got someone who knows someone, you know, on that tip, then it might be happening. But, you know, so all these sort of things, we've got to start really getting behind. If anyone does have a radio station, then we should get behind them and help promote them as well. So that, you know, it, and I think just doing the things that we didn't do before, do you know what I mean? Is well, what I'm getting at. It's, it's, it's made, I think there's, a, there's an element of everyone who... You know, if you're into UK rap or whatever, or you're an artist, whatever it may be, but mm. there's you got there's got to be a push. There's got to be some kind of like we've got to make it relevant. Exactly. Because at the moment, I mean, we when you've been here as long as I have, like you know that it comes round in circles anyway, and you just have to hang on in there <laughs> yeah, yeah. until it comes back round, and it eventually it always does, mm. but. If you listen to like Radio Six or like Huey, Huey and them kind of guys on on BBC Radio One, uh, Two or Six or one of them ones, you hear him playing uh, Juggernaut and artists like that. Mm. Um, they're s slowly being, uh, you know, convinced. That yeah, 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 yeah. Just what you want to feed them. I tell you what, they have they haven't got any time for a regurgitation of what it used to be. Mm. No. Either way, I ain't got a I ain't got the belly for regurgitation because yeah, there's, there's you know, it's like when I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's, fans have a thing where they want to hear the same thing from you. Mm. Yeah, and I, I get that because if I'm but if I if I meet Bob Dylan, man, maybe I won't because he got caught up on some other stuff, but <laughs> if I Bob Dylan, for instance, I'm not going to ask him to, I'm not interested in his new stuff, so I'm, I'm interested in his, his old stuff, but I'm not going to tell him, oh, you should do an album like that, Bob, mm. because that, that's that's when I thought you were really good. Ain't that a bit insulting? Mm. Yeah, 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 it is. You're not, if you're a, really, a true artist, then you you spew out your, your soul or your spirit or your, whatever you're on, you spew it out, you dash it on the canvas, you fling it out to the people, and the people go, yeah or no? And and if it's yeah, then it stands that test of time and people enjoy it forevermore. Mm. If they don't, then it just falls into the massive void that that is, you know, that seems to be now. That for a lot of us we we can put music up and no one listens to it. Mm. No one buys it and no one listens to it. That's so detrimental to how we feel as a community, like when people say UKHH, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I'm not one for tagging, but that, that's what it is. It's UKHH, right? So it's, it's demoralizing to the community, to, to, to us all, when we're dropping music and nothing happens. Mm. And that, that can also be what we touched on earlier about um, digi digi digitalization of everything. Mm. But yeah, because it's so easy and there's so much of it, people ain't going to see it. So that's why th there has to be a step up where we have to make something, uh, we have to make it a big deal. We have to make, make it special. So it's not just, oh, there's another EP. Oh, there's another EP because then it's not a big deal. And the American underground scene seemed to be catching on to how to have accumulate more dividends from from their their products. Like. Because, for instance, um, like you have the labels like Dope, you have Copenhagen Crates, you have Fuck Rap, you have all these little boutique labels that are putting out records that are selling 300, 400, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 6,000 mm. records, but really, really fast. And and there's three different alternative versions and the DJs and the collectors, they want all three of them. Mm. And they can't quick to buy. And one's got an OB strip and all this other stuff. And people over here 
people like Juggernaut, people like Giallo Point, who's a producer, uh, who produces, uh, who produced the last album for uh, Juggernaut. Mm. It's catching on, man. This is what I mean. We're, if we're going to make people notice us, we can't just keep doing the same thing. Same thing, yeah. yeah. So we can't just keep regurgitating what we did from Kung Fu times. Mm. Like, there, there has to be more strategy to it. Not to say that it wasn't strategic, what was going on then, but it's things a, have, you know, things have moved on. It's a, a different bit. world now, yeah. Thank you, yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think people are ready again. It just has to be the right way to market, to give it to them and say, yo, look at it like that. This is, this is a different way to look at it. It's a piece of art. Like Juggernaut. Juggernaut is a very special artist, in my opinion. Mm. As as are a lot of people doing their stuff right now, but there's there's definitely a movement to making the product into yeah. a piece of art. And I know then, exactly what you mean, bruv. He's like yeah. he's definitely took it somewhere like you don't see people doing, and and it goes to what you're saying in terms of making it something special, something that is a it is a moment that people will notice because of how it's being presented, and not many of us do that. Yeah. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah, the 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 early the sort of early what we'll say, I don't know, what would you call it, the early UK hip hop inception. Back at the turn of the century. That was the turn of the century. Um White labels. But it was it was uh we've talked about this before. It was like a healthy scene of like clubs and clothing shops, record shops. Uh, labels, you know, everything. It had, it had the whole package, and that's you. You do need the whole package. You need people to feel like they're buying into something bigger, not just like a one person on the internet who doesn't know anybody else. It's like all these. Every everybody has to be tied in again. That was one of the good things about back then. Is you'd go and see you go and see someone, and about four or five other people would jump on the stage mm. that yeah. night. And you'd feel like everybody knew each other. You'd feel like you was, you know, you, you couldn't wait for those two people to work together. We're like, oh yeah, apparently they're doing something with them. Oh, okay, you know. And, and there was people were all releasing stuff with each other and all the rest of it. You know, mm. so that's why the ten pound bag type thing is is so important. Yeah, I, I think you know. And it's we used gonna... to have a lot of them. We used to have a lot of compilations and and people's mixtapes. And you know, we we talked about who did we talk about? with these before uh, killer was it i think we were talking about it mm. yeah, um, yeah yeah the uh yeah there's loads of different mixtapes around at the time so you got to hear lots of different people sort of testing testing their their stuff out against different beats and things like that but that period looking back now is was sort of a test period and you know once the digital thing happened i think that sort of because there wasn't enough people that had their shit sorted out by the time it, 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 when it, when it came the time to sort of really start producing stuff, there weren't enough people that had the solid grounding. Yeah. People just know? wanted to make music. They didn't know that they had to, no, um, no, that's right. Like, they didn't know. No, that's what was good about it. Is that it, that felt, and... it felt homegrown, yeah. but in a way that was also part of the problem because it, it no, for sure. For sure. Yeah. We, we, we suffered from, we suffered from that, uh, that, very much so because our ethos was to make dirty music from the corner. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but at the same time, it sounds kind of cool to say it, and it's like, yeah, music from the corner, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we did a mix or master this shit, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all right when everyone bought the CD, but now when that's all done, and you know, the radios they can't play that, but like, firstly because it sounds like a fucking dead horse being dragged through a tin pan alley or something. It doesn't sound good enough to be on the radio. Yeah. It's artistic, but it's it's recorded badly. It sounds badly sonically. And yeah, you can pump it and you can have it in your yard or whatever. But radio ain't playing that because as soon as them radio, them proper radio compressors hit them bass drums that I was using, the radio is getting squashed down and you ain't going to hear nothing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and but you know the radio did. It, the radio had jumped onto what was going on what, back then. 
yeah, well, the thing is, I was, you're saying that, but and, uh, then I'm thinking about grime, the way that grime started get, getting played on the radio, and that was quite like, do you know what I mean? It yeah, but you know what, Mice? With, with, with hip-hop now, like, because, well, I'm just going to talk from my side of it, because my production at that time, I can tell you for sure, was really, really basic when we're talking about the engineering side of it and, and actually knowing what you're doing. And, and I would take my beats out of my MPC, fling them onto the 16-track recorder, digital recorder, whatever we were using, mm. and pretty much that's it. And and there's not even really much EQing going oh, on. Oh, wow, it's like, okay. We, I'm not educated like that, so... The stuff that I've learned over 20 years, 25, 30 years, is just me realizing to myself in real time, mate, you're you're really shit. So like, can you just try a bit harder? <laughs> but you had a whole bunch of people sitting in their bedrooms trying to copy your sound at the time, yeah, and just thinking, I, I, how the fuck does he get that sound? Not knowing that you didn't really do anything. With it. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you know what, right? You know. Um, the prodigy, yeah. Um, the, the 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 rapper guy, Maxim. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. One time, I can't remember how we linked him, but he linked us and was like, "I really want you guys." I think it was like MFTC one was just about to be dropped. Like we we hadn't, you know, we hadn't given it to anyone. Hmm. But he was like, so I can't really remember where he found us, but. It, he was like, I want you to come to my yard. So we went to his yard. He had like a massive studio with like pink furry walls and all sorts of shit. It's like plush, plush, plush place. All the uh, the Grammys and the awards or whatever it is they won. And so it was like, it was a bit awe inspiring. It was like, wow, this guy is really famous and mm. he wants to like, he's interested in us. And, you know, we thought maybe somewhere down the line we might get something out of it or whatnot. But he was like, yeah, can I listen to the, Use some music, so I gave him MFTC one to put on, and he pushed it up on the uh, CD mm. player. Pushed it up on his big speakers now, the big massive wall speakers in his studio. Put on Stranger from the Shore, one of the tracks off that first one, and he looked at me and he was like, "Yo, how do you get your kick sounding like that?" And like it was. <laughs> most hilarious moment of my career because it's like dude I literally just got it out of the MPC and put it into the thing and recorded it onto a CD wow. <laughs> and that's it but like he, could, he couldn't have it he, it was like nah man like you must have done something to it to make it sound like that and it's like no it's just got no compression on it and it's popping like that jeez that is hilarious man you know you know what I was going to say though about the radio yeah Rodney P and skits, and you have to think about what what it was massive. What was going on with UK hip hop? Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. A massive platform, and then very suddenly, very weirdly and oddly, it just got dropped. Yeah, and like with, with, with the right, uh, emergence you know. of, of grime or Bruv, whatever. You're right though, because remember Excalibur. Excalibur was, was the first. He was, I think he might have even been the first DJ they signed. On one extra, and he he was all about his show was just like I only play UK hip hop, that was his show, and then most, most obviously of one extra uh, most of one extra was wow hip hop UK hip hop yeah Sarah it's true. yeah yeah um, Rodney P yeah. and Skits yeah it actually like I, I think. Harry's mentioned it there about Kung Fu, Itch, One Extra, Channel U, yeah. MTV yeah. Base, all started at the same time. I feel yeah. coincidence of those created a phenomena, phenomenon and appearance, emergence emergence of an industry. Yeah, it's, yeah, I remember at the time feeling a little bit like One Extra was actually set up to sort of cash in on like a, a, a feeling that was happening already. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah. You could even say that they built the whole thing on what we had been doing. That's, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I think that, yeah, as, as, that's what you expect the BBC to do is to cash in on something that they think is going to make a bit of money. But they very quickly switched into the, the grime thing and, 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 and that obviously has got other connotations as well is that, the, that grime helped sort of bring in a, a different attitude. An era, yeah. Towards, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you know, a different attitude in young people and everything, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. Whereas for sure. the UK hip-hop weren't like that. 
Yeah, and the thing is as well, what I noticed is that, you know, through the years, what I've noticed, and you can see it now, obviously, with the type of music out there now influencing the kids, it's easier for them to manipulate an artist that isn't, you know, that savvy in that world. Mm. You know what I mean? So if it's somebody that just all they're thinking about is fame and money and whatnot and not really thinking about business and like, right, is this guy trying to scam me? Is, you know, you've grown up in an area where you had to, you, you got to look behind your, you got to look over your shoulder every now and again. You know what I mean? You got to check your pockets, make sure everything's still in there. So, you, you know, you could spot these things, but a lot of these kids can't really spot that and they take advantage of that, in my opinion, because it's easier to manipulate them. Mm. You just flash the money in their face. Uh, and I think a lot of that has probably happened because you can see with a few artists, um, things didn't work out the way that you think they would, man. Um, and with the UK hip hop scene, I think a lot of people are already wary of, of what labels are about. You know, we've always, mm. it's always been spoken about in the music anyway. Like, you know what I mean? My employer, <laughs> my employee, you know. Or oh, there's always been True. so you you knew you know so there was a cynicism already built into to the to the UK hip hop scene you think a little bit in a sense there was yeah. like a sort of like a sort of uh, fuck the industry type almost feel into it yeah almost I agree that. I think I've, to me it felt like it felt like a sort of a renaissance of punk music yeah 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 because yeah. there was a lot of DIY stuff going on it was you know pirates there was pirate stations still yeah. playing it. It's you know, white labels and loads of nights every week. You, you could you could pretty much go to a night every night of the week. Yeah, man, that was the <laughs> thing. Much. Like, right, even <laughs> Harry held out a few nights as well. There was it was like that. You could go out nearly every night. You go West End. There's something on you. There's open mic. There's mm. something you can hit. But yeah, uh, it's a it's a whole different world now. Now you just hit your keyboard, innit? it? Look at the screen. Just hit your keyboard. <laughs> oh, it's sick, man. This is, you know, like it's, it's a different world, but uh, obviously the adaptation is key. A man like Farmer G has definitely adapted. I'll tell you that right down now. You know yeah, what I mean? You know what? Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe big up to my guy Hobgoblin. Just I see, I see him signing in. He's a he's a producer from uh, Birmingham, yeah. I do believe. He's from Birmingham. Hobgoblin uh, beats big up. He, yeah, Hobgoblin. Like he's listen. On a production tip, there's a there's there's a lot of guys over here who are working with a lot of people out out of here. The, the, the international mm. artists coming to check the UK scene for for producers and beats. Yeah. Like as you know, Sonny Jim, he's doing a lot of production for Americans. Mm. He's also, I mean, he's doing mad stuff. He didn't he get like a he just do an album with like someone ridiculous, a producer, American producer. So there's a whole, there's uh -huh. a whole, there's a trade going on. And we've, yeah, we just got to change the the old way of thinking, I suppose. And I mean, that's what I, I try to do that. I try to reinvent my own personal s self every other day. You know? yeah. it, it can't be, the same, especially when you get old, like, and you think to yourself, I've done this and I've done that, and I've, and then you f I make a beat and I think to myself, hold on, have I made this beat before? And I start doing a rap and I think, hold on, have I rapped that before? <laughs> and it gets, it starts getting to you, man. Mm. So you have, to, you have to kind of reinvent yourself as long as it's age appropriate. Do you know what I mean? Can't be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get my new era hat on now, yeah, boy, yeah. and start acting crazy, look like a. Uh, it's a, it's a difficult one. Yeah, see, look, people are mentioning the different uh, producers. Yeah. And I think, yeah, obvious, yeah. Old Text mentioned Beat Butcher, Budgie, J. Sue mm -hmm. uh, from up in Scotland. And, uh, yeah, for sure, there's so many. I mean, we do tend to put the emphasis on the MCs and the rappers. Yeah, and definitely. It's, it's a lot of good, good, Good producers from over here that uh, that sadly are overlooked just because of, of the oversaturation and the nature of our scene. Because it's like, like I say, a lot of us find ourselves just throwing music into a huge void, and then like just watching it go down. Yeah. And you can hear it as it's falling into the hole. 
<laughs> that's about it. You don't hear the music, you just hear it for the... <laughs> it's the whole... Yeah, that noise, exactly that noise. And and I, f- I feel that there's a lot of us out here. I mean, me me as well. I, I do it. I, I put Sometimes I put stuff out and it just falls into that void and I think, wow. And um, sometimes it hurts. That's it, Madlib. Sonny worked with Madlib. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, One. That's, that's more than crazy. Yeah, like, that's... Sonny Jim and Madlib. Imagine that. Wow. Is it out? Yeah. Mate, is it I'm out? Hobgoblin sure. is, you know, is it's it out. out? Yes. Is it out? Wow, yeah. that's amazing, man. See it there. It's things like that, boy. That just, you know, mm. that when um four hours with Primo was like, yo, first time I heard it, Lock. Shout out to DJ Lock. He played it in the car. Mm. I was like, what? You know that feeling you get is the excitement of you know the first time hearing the tune. You know, it makes you proud, man. And um, I guess in a sense, it's been a long time coming. But now seeing the amount, like you're saying, the amount of work that's going on back and forth, um, UK and US, ah, yeah, it, you know, it can only get bigger. It's like a snowball, you know what I mean? Moving down the mountain, it can only get bigger. I can see a lot more happening. Um, wow, that's got me pumped, man. Sonny Jim and Madlib, jeez. And Buckwild, yeah. Harry, Harry says, know. and Buckwild. Yeah, and yeah, Buckwild yeah. as well, wow. Serious. Yeah, man. <laughs> yo. But you see, That's you see, you see this is this is this is kind of what I'm saying. Like on the, on the strength wow. of on the strength of what we used to do, when it wasn't just all based yeah. on the socials yeah. and YouTube, there was cohesion on a different level where we knew what we were all doing. We mm. and like Dan mentioned earlier, there was people working with each other features hooking up and it wasn't just over the internet it was actually like when i met uh you you guys mice and and jargon mm. and what was the other guy called mice valiant man rest in peace valiant, valiant. and diligence Shit, so yeah, mi5 huh valiant pass yeah man oh, i'm sorry man that's that's terrible sorry to hear yeah. but yeah when i when i met you guys like i that that that's the kind of thing that everyone need. We need to have that. Mm. We, we 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 all need to know that Sonny has worked with Madlib mm. yeah, and, yeah, for real. and kind of push that onto like a pedestal. And Champion say, that exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and man. We, we all need to know it, and we we all need to shout about it. And I see when he posts these things, and I think to myself, damn, like. That's kind of being overlooked a little bit. Yeah, you might get a little fifty, a little hundred, but you see, you see, even now I'm doing that. Yeah, only got a hundred likes. Mm. That's shit. Because really, we should all know that anyway, and be like calling him up or like. But we don't do that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's we true. We have that kind of that that cohesion, that friendship, that, that uh, and we all know Sonny. Sonny was there at the freestyle jams. He'd come from Birmingham and he'd drive down and he'd be at the freestyle jams yeah. freestyling and battling. So we all know him. Yeah. It's funny, uh, you know, it, it, it gets everything gets a little bit like uh, fragmented, doesn't it? Yeah, it's almost crabby in a bucket E. Crabby in a bucket. Yeah, it can be. It can be. You know, but uh, yeah, that's something, like you're saying, we should champion. Also, I was talking to uh, a guy, Sai, and he, he was saying that he might get. He might be able to get back on um, a radio show and, you know, like how he, he wants to push um, the scene more as well. And I was like, bro, if you do that, let, let me know so that we can get better, you know, because exactly what you're saying, people need to get behind the things that we think deserve to be where they are. Like maybe we weren't supporting, you know what I mean, certain radio stations enough where people felt like, oh, we sh- you know, maybe we should keep them. No, they're like, no, nah, we'll get rid of them because we need more. Um, listeners and and these people, even though this music isn't you know whatever whatever, they get more listeners, and that's kind of, that's partly our fault. We gotta um, kind of accept that and admit that in a way as well. And um, you know, as we're pushing forward, obviously, like you said, can't do the same thing. That's another side of it as well, not just the, you know how we release and whatnot, but even how we deal with um, the, the the music in terms of the business side. Anyway, we don't have to make it too much like. 
right, you know, here's a, here's a contract and here's how, you know, but more so just like be on point with it, you know, take it as serious as you do because it is, and when it's something you love, it doesn't feel like work, do you know what I mean? No. Um, but no. that's the side of it I think we definitely got to look at, man. Bring um, that country, guys. Bring that. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we could. Well, I mean, you know, that would be that would be blessed if we could. I'm sure they'd let us as well. Charlie and Leo, sure they'd let us, man. They don't want to come on the show. I don't think they. Yeah, you know I mean, they don't want to come on and, talk, and reminisce about them days in, in case yeah, but, well, tears Mike, come. Mike, I swear, when when the last time that I inquired about uh, kung fu and where where it belongs and and the uh, name and and whatnot. Oh yeah. I swear that someone in Brighton. Yeah, um, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that, yeah, yeah. Let's move on, man. Let's move on. Nah, bruv. Wrap that, idea that whole up. thing. Yeah, yeah, that I've forgotten about that whole. That was a whole shenanigans, boy. No wonder. Yeah, yeah of that, course. That, that person was putting a block on the whole move, right? <sighs> yeah, the living yeah. block. That yeah, was block. like, yo. Serious man, that was Alcatraz type block. You but that's the, mean? that's the kind of thing. Like, what? imagine getting cock blocked by a big ass Alcatraz sized <laughs> rock. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, I was just about to dive in. Uh, I can't remember her name. Was it Sarah or something? I don't know. Probably. Oh, yeah, really? I can't even remember. But yo, I've forgotten about that. Um, but l check it. Harry said, um, in our days, we had um, locations or events, etc., where we could all check in with each other, which is missing now. Uh, yeah. I think it, it definitely is missing. Uh, and also, it's the fact that we're, we're, and we're also not used to hitting each other up, you know what I mean, on the WhatsApp or phone or whatever, whatever it is. So that's missing as well, in a sense, you know what I mean? Uh, Maybe it's something we're not used to doing, in a sense. Uh, I think, but we've all got to adapt in, in our former ways, you know? I remember, like, the whole... Man, I was in Miami, yeah. This is like 2001, I think. Shout out to Oshi. And it was, um, how many MCs? There's a few of us that managed to go to Miami, yeah. Intense came, bruv. Intense was with us. It was <laughs> hilarious, man. <laughs> and uh, Messiah. And um, we're like, yeah, we, me and Messiah, we met these chicks. I can't remember where it was, but we met them somewhere. And we were all hanging out and rah, 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 And then... It come towards the end of the day. And then Messiah was like, yeah. Then, you know, the chick was like, yo, so we swap emails. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my email, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my mom was like, uh, you got an email? I goes, uh, nah, nah, nah. But um, give me your one, innit? And then I'll, I'll email you. You know, and she's like, all right. And then they left now. This is me to Messiah. Yo, bruv, how much is it for an email? <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? He's like, what? Like, how much does it cost to get emailed in? Like, cause I'm, ain't it? Yeah, he's like, no, nah, bruv, you just sign up, man. It's free. I was like, right, it's free. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> bruv, but, you know, you learn then. I was like, yo, I better start learning this shit because it feels like this is where it's going. Get a computer. You know what I mean? Learn it all. And it's the same thing that's happening now. We just got to adapt to um, what type of situation we're in, you know? Jeez, yeah. MySpace, take it back to MySpace. <laughs> Jesus, boy. The top eight. Right, so uh, Gleam says, bring back Friends Reunited. Yeah, yeah that's, you won't remember that. What's Friends that's Reunited? The, this, that's a deep cut. If you're, uh, yeah, see, what's Friends Re Reunited? That is, that's a very deep internet. That sounds cut. like before it was AOL. That's before Facebook, everything. It was just yeah. school people meeting each other on there. School people. Yeah, just like your school. You went by your school, Friends Reunited, and then you had your school on there and you all met all your old school friends on there and all that sort of thing. Probably only like eight years after most of us had left school anyway. Oh, serious? What, and it was online? Yeah. I never went on there. I just, you know. You just like, hey, how's it going? How's it going? They're all like, sorry, we don't remember you. <laughs> 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 oh, it's Dandruff. Oh, hi. Oh, Dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, you know. All right, I'm going now. I'm mum's cool for tea. <laughs> yeah, it's dandruff and scream for cream right here. Did you have any nicknames when you was a kid? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Um I suppose the first one was Big Hips. <laughs> <laughs> Big Hips. <laughs> no, because my brother was little hips, innit? <laughs> 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 
That's because hilarious. Because when, when, when we first moved to the flats, my my brother would have been uh, two years old, maybe. Mm. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, the the kids, because my mum and dad, they were squatters, yeah? And, and they had long hair and, like, me and my brother look a little bit, like, you know, a bit wild and rough around the edges. Uh. And we moved to the flats. And, uh, yeah, the kids the kids used to thought we were, like, hippies and, and shit. Like, or tramps, basically. First, they thought we were tramps. Yeah. And, and like, they would run past the, the, the front room window and dash a brick in there. And I remember, I remember when I was young, like, we'd, we were sat in the, the sitting room and a brick, the brick literally come through the window and, like, you could just hear, hear a kid running off going, Chippos! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We can laugh about it now. Yeah. Quite funny. Yeah. But then, then uh, when me and my brother, you know, familiarised ourselves with the local the Motley crew, like, they called me Big Hips for Big Hippie and yeah. my brother Little Hippie. So that, 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 was, that was my first. Uh, and for some reason, I got the nickname Reebok at one point. I don't even know why. You know what I had? You remember Adidas Jet? Adidas Jet, yeah. Oh, Adidas Jet. What do they look like again? They look like school shoes. Like they were, they were. You, well, basically, you could you could get them in black and you could like wear them. School shoes. Yeah, they, they were nice, man. It, well, I don't know if they look nice now, but <laughs> so I, I had a pair of Adidas Jet, and I can just remember people thinking they were Reebok all the time. So they used to call me. I used to say, "No, they're not Reebok. They're Adidas." And so they just started calling me Reebok, and I, I was Reebok. walking around. As a thirteen-year-old, being called Reebok for some mad reason. <laughs> yeah. Reebok. But big, big, me and my brother still call big each hip. other big hips and little hips. Because it sounds, you know, when you say it, then you're picturing Rav Farmer G with big hips, like as a kid, <laughs> like literally with your anatomy, you know. But it's then you say I was hippies. <laughs> so try to erase that image out of my head now. <laughs> as a kid with big hips. Chester is like two year old with big hips, isn't it? <laughs> you with your dry skin, me with my Lib, dandruff. Yeah. <laughs> me, I was called Scream for Cream because, like, my yeah, I didn't know, you know, I had to cream my legs and that. And I was wearing oh, Bermuda shorts when I went to, um, uh, yeah, you got laughing at the Bermuda shorts, you know, Bermuda shorts with the white socks and that. And I probably, I ain't gonna lie, I might have had like Gola on or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a strong look. It's, yeah, it's weird how now Gola is cool, isn't it? Mm. But back then, Gola was like, you were in Gola. It's like a Skoda. Mm. Back then, a Skoda is like, yo, what? You're driving a Skoda? Your mum drives a Skoda? <laughs> now, yeah. Well, you got, that's a Skoda, bro. Like, right. Yeah. Big oh, tech. You got a good car. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man. And uh, I used to roll in to um, play center. Bruv, they called me Scream for Cream. I didn't know why until I found out I had to cream my legs. Yeah. Well, you know, you live with it, man. You live and learn. So now I always call, carry, like, shea butter with me just in case the elbows get a bit dry. You know what I mean? Stop the lips you. as well. Yeah, if my lips are dry, that's it. You, you'll think I'm on crack. You'll be like, right, am I on crack now? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, man. Old nicknames, man. Shit's funny. Yo, let's get into some mice investigates. Um, yeah. Right, so, this um, week. Let's get into some. Hold on. Oh, uh, yeah. Dun, 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 As you know, we always got to go in every week. Farms know, man. I carry this with me. Investigations. I like learning. You know what I mean? And I, I think it's important that we get these things out of people's minds. Let us know what you're thinking, bitches and bitchettes. This week's Mice Investigates. What was the most valuable thing you learned during lockdown? Lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. <laughs> I learned I can blaze a lot more than I thought I could. My tolerance level. Right, I, don't, I don't think anybody could fuck with me after this lockdown, bruv. Like, uh, I think, yeah, I could outblaze the best of them. Iron Lungs is back after this lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> lockdown was fucked up, bruv. Going through bounces, bounces every couple of days, but <laughs> stressed out, 
Yeah, I'm gonna go to shops again. Shit, man, I'm gonna be out there. The fucking zombies might get me. <laughs> yeah, talking to going to the shops dead, though. Real life Walking Dead, just going to Sainsbury's. Boy. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think my, fi- I thought about it because we've had all week to think about it. Yeah. I think mine was was learning that going to the shop once a week is like a really good thing that my mum and dad used to always do, and then now I do it just one shop a week. Yeah. I, I, I can't stand going to the shops anymore. After all this stuff, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only person not wearing a mask, all the rest, you know, so we've had this real traumatic shopping event. Yeah, so it's like, weird. Now what I've learned is that going shopping once a week, that was really good. That was a good was idea. A good idea it? that my mum and dad, you know, I, I, I rebelled against it for a long time. <laughs> you know, 40 years of my life. See what it takes. It. Takes, what it takes. It takes, it takes a global scandemic yeah. to make you go shopping once a week. Well, you know, you live and you learn, man. That's it. Next time this happens, at least you'll be prepared. You know to get the toilet roll early, bro. <laughs> bog roll early. You got to be on top of the bog roll. 50, like, you know what I mean? 50 packs. I am. Now, this Act time. like that 50 packs is not there. And then there, start topping up exactly, again. More exactly. bog roll, more bog roll. So when I'm they're ready. All, Next time I'll be ready. When they're literally shitting themselves, because they got to wipe with their hand. <laughs> You're good. You'll be out there shot in <laughs> two plays. <laughs> One play at a time. One play. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into some uh, answers then for this inve- this week's investigation. This one, I think we got some deep answers, actually, I must say. Some, like, spiritual level answers, which is interesting. So shout to Play, uh, play It Loud Studio. He says, reduce outgoings. And cut the things out you don't need. Spend more time with your family and friends. Just relaxing and enjoying the company. And that's real. That sounds all right to me. Mm, That's real, man. Like we were talking about, man, it's that inner thing. Being able to be, you know, on your own, if that's the case, or even with your family. Like, a lot of us sometimes it's like, ah, I just need to get out, man. I need to get out and, you know, Maybe it's time that we, we change that dynamic so you don't always feel like you need to get out, mm. you know? Um, and these are the sort of times that can aid that, I think, you know? Things are becoming more real to people. Shout out to uh, Mr. DJ Random. He says, being a burglar is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. I'm sure it is. Not unless you're the awkward thief, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work properly. Uh, Sosa, <laughs> shout out to Sosa NYC. This is Homeboy Sandman's uh, DJ. He says, most valuable thing I learned, I never locked down to begin with. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> There's certain people that, yeah, I was like, bruv, yeah, I knew you, you knew what was going on already, man, from day one. <laughs> shout out to Gibberish, man. Gibberish has been dropping some new stuff. Do you remember Gibberish from... Um, uh, uh, Ironbridge. Ironbridge, yeah, Ironbridge. Jeez, yeah. see, people are they're popping back out, yeah. farms. Yeah, oh no, I chatted to them. I've been chatting Nations. to them. Oh, for real? Yeah, 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 I've been chatting to them. Yeah. Say no more. See the way he said it? Mm. Yeah, you already know what that means. Mm. I've been chatting to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, gibberish, yeah, yeah. man. It's good to hear he's back out. He says not to watch uh, Amityville Horror with my family and get any ideas. See, yeah, that's that yeah. stressful at home, boy. You know what I mean? You get stressful at home, but you got to work. Work with that dynamic. All right. So I don't know if I should go into this one because it might get her in trouble. Shout out to Nicole Kisser in the building. She said, uh, where would I want to start? I've learned a lot over these last 80 months. Definitely an eye-opener. These times have been for us. And uh, She didn't really want to elaborate for some reason because she felt she might get in trouble. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> she, she said on the chat, it took me almost 12 years to get Mr. Kisser to let me do online shopping. Was it the lockdown that, caught, that let her start online shopping? Dun, 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 dun. We have a, a married couple on the, in the, the chat kissers. room. Yeah, the Kissers. <laughs> the Kisser couple. Such a good name for a couple as well. Kisser couple. The Kissers. <laughs> the Kissers for real, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, we love the chat room here. Shout out to Greg Blackman, man. Another talented mother lover. He said lockdown pretty much killed the idea that I'm a genuinely um that I'm a genuinely misanthropic person. Turns out 
that not only do I actually like human contact and being around people, I need it to stay happy and well. See, that's human life right there. We need contact. It's funny that they're trying to stop us from contacting each other, don't you mm. think? It's a bit strange out there. I don't they want to know who you're contacting through contact yeah. tracing. See, we bait up Nicole Kissa, I think. I don't think. <laughs> Yo. Yo, shout out to Steve. Steve Horse. He said um, that it meant fuck all. I was more active with my hound. All, go all golf clubs uh, closed. So some serious walking was done with mates while smoking joints. Four months off work, fully paid. Lost some weight. Hey, you're one of the few people that did that, boy. We were talking about loss of weight. Yeah. A lot of people were like, yeah, I've got that. You got lockdown weight? Yeah, you got some lockdown weight, boy. That other chin, try to grow another chin. <laughs> uh, he said, not really a lesson, but take it full advantage. Yeah, man. That's, what, well, that's one thing that happened for me was I, I managed to get a lot of time in and do a lot of reading and then learning stuff that I might not have been, you know what I mean? I might not have never known nothing about. I might have <laughs> thought I did, but then once you start diving in you're like oh wow uh, and realizing how this world works man it's really in enlightening and empowering at the same time um who else is there wow milva b said the insignificance of everything that change starts with yourself not the rest of the world see that there this is what i'm saying that change starts with yourself not the rest of the world farmer was talking about that earlier in a different way but literally that's what it is it's mm -hmm. like us deciding to change and then making that change and it starts from within you know what i mean oh see this is what i'm saying ratty the sly he's getting deep now self so he said self-worth is a big thing and to have confidence in my abilities being able to practice daily helped too because i've improved skill while uh what does he say while hugely, it says wise, but while hugely over the last year. Oh, he's, he's improved skill-wise hugely over the last year. I don't know why, I must be Blaze, man. <laughs> <So he's, laughs> yeah, but you see, people are getting deep out there, man. And I, I think it's a beautiful thing, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? To see yeah. that uh, there's more of a self-realization going out there in the world as well, going on out there. Where e people even are really if only 10% more people are a bit more self-aware. That's a good thing. Yeah, because it it can it means it's growing and it carries on. It may not be to the you know the extreme that we want it to, but yeah. it means that it's happening and there are people taking the time to do it as well, like really find themselves and learn what makes them happy. You know what I mean? Like value. Where people are getting excited? Oh yeah, I want to go. Oh, I want to do this just because you can't do it. But if if you could do it, you wouldn't you wouldn't be going on like that. So no. why do you need to? You know. But they can't help themselves, I guess. Um, wow, Kenny Rebel Westy said he learned to be an engineer and live frugally <laughs> like a student. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the random shit, man. Engineer, yo, I'm an engineer now. No, no, no. Oh. Fit in five. Can G I get towers. half of that? <laughs> we say fit in five G. Made <laughs> <laughs> uh, a killing. Yo, what else we got? So Rob. Dark half. He says, I enjoy my own space more than I thought. Kind of valuable <laughs> when you're single. You see? Kind of valuable when you're single as well. But think about that. I enjoy my own space. A lot of these... It's sad to see that some people can't handle it, but I think that's the thing you've got to overcome. It's like, look, it's all right to be by yourself and mm. listen to yourself. And then also, you're not really alone when you think about it, man. Mm. There are a bunch... Look how many people are talking about that. Being on their own and you know, so you're not alone. There's a bunch you of others. Say, you could say you could say that you're not alone in in your loneliness, isn't it? See it there. Yeah, man, that's because a perfect way to put it. People, it. There's a lot of people that are lonely. That's right. Mm. Um, but they're not alone. No, you need, you need something called lonely space where all lonely people join. You know what I was going to say though, as well on the. Uh, People, I think people can think too much, like, and that's what that's what sends a lot of people down dark dark tunnels, and that's sometimes what sets the trap to ensnare their mind 
to be preoccupied with um, anything else. Like it doesn't matter what you're overthinking. But I think overthinking anything. It, it, it's like what they say about um, taking everything in, you know, modesty. Mm. And the same with a train of thought. If you think too much, then you're preoccupied with that thought, which takes away the focus from a lot of other stuff that is just as um, just as important to be thinking about, or just even looking after yourself. And your mind your mind can deteriorate quite rapidly when you when you just follow one train of thought. Mm. Yeah, it's very true. It's uh, sometimes it is the the best thing you can do when you've got stuff on your mind is to try and forget about it. It's well, difficult. Think- it's difficult to say that as well. Yeah, yeah, it is difficult. But like, definitely having not enough to think about mm. when you just start s- making it smaller and smaller, yeah. and then you've just got this one focus mm-hmm. all the time. It's that. It's that. It's that. And sometimes. Uh, sometimes some stuff doesn't have a definitive answer. Right. So, mm-hmm. And and this is this is what the government will hand you, and they've always handed you. They've handed you conversations or idealisms that have no answers. Mm. They have no end. There's there's so your mind is preoccupied with trying to find the conclusion to what. And that, that's that's dangerous for people who think too much or susceptible to being um, influenced. Mm, yeah. Because there's a lot of people who are influenced too easily. Yeah. And mm. you can you can be given a whole set of things to think about, and then a whole heap of drama unravels because it's too much for that little brain to understand or comprehend. That there may no be an, that there, there may not be an answer to what they've just been handed. Mm. So they could spend the, literally the rest of their life looking for the answer to a to a question that has no answer. Mm. So you're not a flat earther then? No, I've, listen, mate. <laughs> man, I've been there with the best of them. Like we we have had we just had this conversation before, last last couple of weeks. It's come up, you know, the flat earth thing, and it's like the conclusion we've sort of come to is what difference does it actually make if you're just going to go to the shops every day and, you know, you're just going to play computer games. It don't matter what shape the earth is. Mm. That's that's exactly right, Dan. uh, Hopefully when we all mature and we get a little bit more understanding of oneself and understanding of our surroundings and Mm. the people and the devices that are used to entrap us and all the other stuff mm. to play a certain role in society and all them kind of things. Once we get old enough and mature enough to understand these things, then hopefully we won't waste all our time thinking or spewing about certain one. I don't mind what anyone thinks. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I I couldn't give a hoot. Like if you've been vaxxed or not vaxxed, I couldn't. I couldn't give a hoot if this person thinks that thing or this person thinks another mm-hmm. thing. What What is a shame is when people are so, um, like... Adverse. Well, they're crazy with it. Mm. Focused in on it, yeah. Mm. yeah. But, but, but you see them on, on the news and, and, and even that, like, you don't even know if that's true, but you, you've got yeah. all these factions of society that are fighting each other and opposing each other all the time. And it's, it's, it's all these idealisms that, like, mate, come on! Like, like, it's not, it's not living because it's just shouting at each other to believe what I think. It's like, this is what I think, you idiot! You don't understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And it's like, mate, I couldn't give a shit what you're trying to say because I don't care. Yeah. And that, that's really, you know, I can't let this, what's up mm. here, be infiltrated or poisoned by external forces, whatever they are. Mm. Yeah, because up here is the only thing that we have. Yeah, and yeah. If, if that gets starts being used by things outside of oneself, it's like, then the, what, what, what the hell is going to be happening there then? Mm. And that's what I mean. Pe- people's not making their own 
decisions anymore. They're not thinking for themselves anymore. So then there, there is no alternative way of thinking because what's alternative about flat earth? What's, alter, what's alternative about anti-vax? Mm. What's alternative about Christianity against Muslims? What's all, there's no alternative because it's all so mainstream. It's yeah. all mainstream. So, what, you know what I mean? It's like, what, what's, what's, what's different? Nothing. It's all, it's all the same. So we're all just shouting at each other, trying to, trying to say, I'm right. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what we've been, that's kind of the theme we've been talking about as well through um, these podcasts is like the fact that a lot of stuff out there that people are ranting and raving about and, and you know, waving their flag about is, is not even real. It's artificial. It's all like man made stuff. It's not made from, you know, like nature. It's like someone named it and then said, you're that. Now you tick that box and now you, you, you know, all these years ticking that box, now you feel like. You're, that's you, but it actually isn't you. And it, until people, you know, that's the whole thing about know thyself, isn't it? Until people realize that, it's forever, there's always going to be throwing these boxes at you for you to tick and go, oh, yeah, I'm that as well. Yeah, yeah, I represent, oh, if you're not, I hate you because you're not that, you know? It's nonstop. Um, but yeah, I, I still, I think, it, it, you know, there's the level of levels of growth. We've got uh, the physical side, obviously, you know, mental growth, but then there's a spiritual side that I think is just totally missing. And even to, it's missing to the point where even if you say that shit, people go, oh, fucking hell, yeah. You know, and I'm not talking about religion or nothing like that. I'm on about being, you know, sort of, you know, even being able to handle being alone by yourself. There's yeah. something spiritual to that, you know, whether it's meditating or whatnot. But because people, you know, were so stimulated by this, that, and the third, all these different artificial things, you never get that focus and you never really do find yourself. So that's why you're always this lost person that is trying to attach yourself to all these different things and then, you know, that sort of hidden anger underneath it all comes out. Uh, whoever is kind of adverse to what you're trying to push or what you're, you know, you, you've attached yourself to. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. See, it's, it's like the... the uh, Everyone's drawn to the disagreement. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's like the argument is the uh, is the food. That's what it seems now, and it, it it just it just goes back to that that old one of divided. Divide and conquer, yeah. Divide right. and conquer, yeah, man. It's the Hegelian dialectic, man. It's, it's, it's the oldest one, and it's the it's the one that rings true to to me in my mind. If I think about it, if I look at the news, if I think about what I hear people talking about and see what people write about on the on the uh, socials and stuff, everyone's divided. Mm. So, I mean, come on, man. We're just a sitting duck, aren't we, really, at the end of the day? Mm. We're not looking at where they, they got us pointing left, right and centre and not looking where we should be looking, which is up. Like, oh, it's them. Yeah. Like, they're against all of us here. They, You know what I mean? But... Uh, it's crazy, man. But you know, I mean, I'm just glad that, like I said, man, you were schooling man about that shit from way back already within the music, and I'm glad that I, I was able to hear it and not forget about that type of shit. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a lot of people that they've kind of been lost in this world of you know this matrix now, but you know, thankfully there's quite a few of us, and boy, appreciate that, brother. Like to put. Mm. To put, to put those sort of things in your music in the first place and not worry about whether people think you're paranoid or you're this or that, do you know what I mean? It's already one thing. They did definitely, you know. Mm -hmm. like we, 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 we started getting labelled with, like, the emo the emo rap, do you know what I mean? It, this, no, for real. For real. I mean, there's... There's a time and place for everything, man. But I do, be I do believe, man, you can get seriously lost in, like I was trying to say before, it doesn't matter what it is you're thinking about. And when you get deep into conspiracy theories and, like, the idea of, like, these plots and that plots and the Blue Bean Project and mm. all these different little things that you can find out about. That's a wicked one. I like Trump's that one. going in, boy. He's going in. Jeez. No, but I found that, I found that, like a long time ago, and I read the I read the papers. I, I mean, it's a 
mate, if I had a lot of money, I would just hand that into a director of a film company and say, boom, there's the film. That's the film we're going to make because that it reads like a film and it, it, it's, it's got everything in it. It's got all the action and the catastrophe that you could possibly want. You just need to throw Bruce Willis in there and, and it, it's, a, it's a wrap. Like, uh, but you can get lost in all of that stuff. Mm. You can really, really badly get lost, especially if you like, you know, you might be susceptible to certain stuff. And at them times, I would, I would have been smoking a lot, Maestro. I just smoke mm. a lot of weed, and and uh, it, okay, it, it, didn't, it didn't, it didn't help me uh, to have the. I, I suffered a bit from the weed psychosis, and mm. uh, maybe I should just never have smoked in the first place, but didn't do anything good for my mind and and especially when you mix that up in a bowl of conspiracy theories and yeah yeah the world's against you mate like um <laughs> you know, doom and gloom yeah uh, so you got a doom and gloom it, t-shirt on really uh debilitating you know what i mean it, it kind of took the, the wheels off my vehicle for, mm. for quite a long time of my life where you know you want to be part of society, don't you, as a person? Mm. But then when you start believing, like, in full, that, yo, there's a conspiracy against me, mm. like, <laughs> then, then, then you, you're losing. Yeah, right? when yeah. it's like, You know what I mean? So that's why I was saying, like, when it's just, when you pinpoint stuff and, you know, we just want to go out and have a nice time and, and chat about stuff and have a laugh and, and disagree and, and laugh about it. And we should be okay to disagree as well. That's what that's I'm saying. Another thing. Yeah, that's healthy. That's, yeah. that's healthy where you can sit down and you can say, yeah, what do you think about lip fillers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a fish or is she doing it for herself to look good or yeah. like all about what's behind it? And, and, and everyone should be able to have a laugh and, and, and feel good about that conversation or even if it's like, well, have you been vaccinated? Why not, sir? We can still have that Have conversation. the conversation. Yeah, that's the thing. People, but it's it's weird how they don't even want to talk. You know, it's, it's yeah, they don't want to talk about it. And then also, it, it all, it, there's, it, I think what I feel like is there's too much emotion attached to whatever it, the situation is. And so even to have a conversation about it is hard for a lot of people. Because, well, because, because, my people are dying. Yeah, people they're really scared, dying. man, yeah. So, if millions of people are dying all around the world and you ain't being vaxxed, then, mate, like, you're you're to blame. Mm. Yeah. And if you ain't at it because you're just trying to see if it works and everyone don't die in a couple of years, mm. then you're out of order for doing that. You're still to blame, yeah. If you're not part of the team. It's mad, like, man. It's mad. Like you know, who's who's to say? Who's to say anything? It's like I I live in my house with my wife and my two kids. My wife's been vaccinated. I ain't got an issue with that. Mm. I ain't got an issue with that. She wouldn't be able to go work if she never got vaccinated. So I, how am I going to have an issue with it? Mm. I ain't been vaccinated. She ain't got an issue with that. What's she going to do? Chuck me out because mm. I ain't been vaccinated. But this is this is the kind of temperature that this this one is going to reach because mm, you're it's, right. It's that important to some people, and they just want to argue. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the sad part, man. That's pretty profound what you're saying, man. The fact that both of you um, didn't do the same thing, and then but you're still together and you're cool with it, and and that's how it should be. It's, it was like that before with any other quacks, anyway. It was already like that. So how how comes all of a sudden now people are like, oh, we're getting a divorce. Oh, I've left my husband. Or you're like, what? Like, so you can't even sit down and talk about it and try and learn from each other if it if it needs to be. It's like, yo, this is crazy. They've really got into people's heads in some crazy way, man. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of prayer hands out there, man. Love out there. See, that's real love. You know what I mean? You ain't meant to be arguing about. It. Don't let them come into your situation and make you have turmoil with your family, with this one and that one, mm. over some external... Do you know what I mean? At the, the bottom line is the people who can see it can see it and people who can hear it can hear it. The people that can't, we actually... we can't. It's, it's hard not to, but 
we can't be mad at them because you know what I mean they're scared man like a lot of the people that have had to do it they're doing it because they're scared yeah um, some people are like yo I need to go on holiday or you know yeah, obviously like you said some people work but so if they're already that scared and now they've done it like the worst the last thing we should be doing is making them feel even more scared with you know what I mean because yeah. trust it's gonna hit us man when people if bam 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 we'll be like yo you know so <laughs> people nice. shouldn't wish for it man Nice. On, 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 on a level as well, it's like, what happened to just everyone just having a little bit of decent respect for each other? Mm. Like, and, and, uh, and just being able to make, like, I respect anybody else's idea of how they want to live their life. It's mm. completely up to them. It's completely up to them. Mm. And what they do shouldn't and will not impact on how I want to live mine. Exactly. And that should be the end of it. And a debate is healthy. An argument is healthy as long as everyone's cool afterwards. A fight, a riot, a culling, being pariahs and all the rest of it, that's that's just madness and it's nonsense. Mm. It's, yes. it's nonsense. And, and, and again, why I always revert back to the beginning, for me personally, the divide one, when they divide you, then you're at your weakest. And right now, you can see the world is in turmoil. Mm. It couldn't be more divided. Mm. The, the humans ain't stand together in their own countries, let alone look across to the next man's land mm. and say, yeah, we need to like stand up for these guys over here. Mm. Like, what's happening in Haiti and all them kind of places right now? Like, shit, man. You know, that, that last one, the earthquake or whatever mm. in 2000 or whatever mate the amount of people that died in that uh, earthquake and then they just add another one and then straight away after they got some they got some next shit going on it's like do we care yeah yeah do we actually fucking care you just get on the news and then it's the next bunch of news the next day and then some next news the next day we don't care about what's going on here how how are we going to be how are we going because we're divided completely and utterly divided so mm. how how are we gonna rectify this this problem that the world is having? Mm. What's, to be done? What's to be done? Mm. So like uh, me, I'm just like, all right, bless everyone, bless everyone. You do what you're doing. Well, I'm gonna do what I'm doing because when when the shit goes down, you better be ready. But, you just gotta put your head down. And this that's the part I guess that people. Um, kind of say though they're like okay but it is affecting me because i can't do the things i would normally do and then you know and it's kind of hard to say to them like you know well just hold tight <laughs> or whatever you know they have a point when it gets like this you're like right so hold on a minute you know because of all of this i've got to now suffer you know like the businesses that have um you know had to close down and you know, jobs that have been lost and whatnot. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. But, you know, I think, yeah, like you said, the people that know, it's like, yeah, you've got to now start working out how you're going to be prepared for whatever because you can see how it is now, you know, rather than sit there and fingers crossed and hope that someone walks on water and <laughs> comes and saves you. You know, like you said, when the shit goes down, you better be ready. So I guess that's what we got to do, man. Start communicating yeah. more. Don't just sit there and feel like, oh, it's like, yo, let's chat. Um, you know, come outside the box. If you if the if it is getting to you mentally, talk about it, man. You need to get it out of your mind, right? Like, and that's the best way. Whether you write it down or you talk to someone, um, these are good ways of getting it out of your mind and um, not, you know, letting it eat at you on the inside, man. And don't be afraid. Like, we're all here together. We're all, regardless, if you feel like you're on your own, but what was it, well, how did you put it earlier? You, you had a wicked phrase earlier. You're, yeah, you're not alone in your loneliness. Yeah, you're not alone in your loneliness. That's what you got to realise. Like, everyone else is fit. At some point, in the whether it's the day or the week or whatever, there are people like, yo, reality's just like, bam, 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 bam. And you're like, okay, okay, cool. You know? And, you know, trust, man. We'll get through this for sure, man. I'm telling you. It can't last this long. 
and people don't really understand, you know, they don't really wake up. So the bottom line is everyone look after yourself, you know, make sure you keep yourself healthy. Don't worry about all that BS. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, keep yourself in good spirits. Keep your family in good spirits. Now we know what really matters. Like last night I was at the Tyre event and man, just to see all these different faces, Shawnee T, Black Twang, you know, um, Terry Walker, uh, Tremendous mm-hmm. was there. Um, you know, the freshers like Archer. Yeah. Uh, um, Scheme was there. Big Cakes was there. You know what I mean? It was just bam, bam, bam. And it just felt like, wow, old school, like, yo, that energy, that old school energy. You know, we're here now, but just that energy of like seeing people like, yo, yo, I ain't seen you for time. Yo, hey, bro, it's good to see you. Yeah. you, know? you know, like strong hugs and all that. So, you know, it felt good. And at the same time, we're in this digital world. Let's, you know, people just need to start learning how to text a bit quicker. That's all. Man need to learn how to download from uh, WeTransfer. <laughs> You know, there's a certain man, they don't know how to use <laughs> we transfer yet. <laughs> they're all struggling and shit. Yo, how do I email the thing? Like, bring a hard drive, yeah? Now I'll burn, it, I'll burn it onto a CD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, you see, um, we transfer, yeah? Yeah. There's another one called P Cloud. Yeah, that's what I use, yeah. Yeah, P, oh, P Cloud is live, man. It's banging, man. You. Got the little, the, the little, what's it called in it? And the player. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got the yeah, player. Yeah. You can like build folders in it as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's wicked. You can just upload, upload, and then you can build a different folder with it. Um, we, we, tran- we transfer for, 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 for when, you, when you're trying to be sly, because you know it's only got a week on it, and you send it to someone, and you're thinking, yeah, are they going to even check it before the week is done? That's them sly ones, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is funny though, man. All the different apps and all that. What's your favorite app then? Oh, nah, let me say this. I thought this was beautiful, man. I said to Farmer <clears throat> earlier today, I was like, bruv, send me your number so I'll text you when, you know, so we could do the test out in it with the with the um, Skype and whatnot. Well, I mean, hit me back. Bruv, I don't have a phone. I'll hit you. <laughs> I was like, you know, <laughs> yo. That's how I know yeah. things are calm yeah. for you, boy. Yeah, I don't have a phone, man. I don't, we, the, the wife don't have a phone. She's never had a phone. Not, not in, obviously, she's got a house phone. Yeah. People, people say, yo, what's a house phone? <laughs> <laughs> no, but when I met the wife, she was like, I don't have a mobile phone. And I was like, shit. And then I started realizing how much I never put this flipping thing down. <laughs> so, uh, eight years. I think eight years now. I ain't, I ain't had a phone. Eight years. Yeah. Right. You're not playing around, boy. No, but I mean, like, this is it, though. Like, if we're talking about the things we're talking about, and we're gonna take them seriously, like, we let go of these things, right? You're right, bro. You're right. I hate. You know what I hate? This is the thing about the phone. Is everything comes to it now? Everything, like email, text. Yeah. Cool, your Insta, your Twitter, your and it's like every, you know, and it they, and they really made it like this is part of you. This is an extension of you now. Like, yeah, you know, you know what as well, Mike. When I stopped using the phone, hmm. like the little, uh, you know, like the the, me- the message chime and and the email chime and all the different little noises, is so. Um, burn into your mind the, the pitch and the tone that mm. for months after like I would hear something obviously I didn't have my phone on me because I didn't have a phone but you would hear a ping or a piece in a piece of music and I'd suddenly be touching my pocket where my phone is because it's that it's burning yeah. it burns into you like the little mm. noise like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you're right I'm shit yeah, you, I just had a flashback of doing that shit for real, you know. And like, you just you know, like, I thought I heard the phone. phone. Yeah. When you check the phone. When, when I used to have a, a Siemens, an, a, a Siemens phone back in the day, and it used to go, <laughs> like that. That used to be the, the ring, uh, the message or something like that. Mm. But like, you know, does it hear it? <laughs> and I think, hey, wait, I ain't even got that phone. It's like, what am I talking about? It's yeah. like iPhone nowadays, but it's definitely... <laughs> uh, Something to think about, man. It's like when people are saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be vegan and all this kind of stuff." 
You know what I mean? It's like, all right, we'll think about putting the phone down as well. Like, because, <laughs> no, but like, yeah, That's we'll true. save the we'll save the planet and and that by not eating all these cows and all them ones. But at the same time, the phone is killing you, man. Mm. Like, it's not killing. It's not necessarily killing the guy next to you or the next guy, or it's causing all the methane to it to kill the ozone layer or whatever that crap is. But like, it's killing you, isn't it? Mm individually like one by one it's it's uh it's, and if it ain't killing you like giving you cancer or radio radio waves in your brain it's it's killing your it's killing your actual fucking up here like it's it's it's, it's melting your your uh, your capabilities yeah Yo, Mr. You, you rely on it right what's the first thing when i when i wake up first thing i do is i draw for the macbook Mm. And and start looking at what's going down. Mm. And it's yeah. the same thing, isn't it? There's radio waves from that as well, isn't it? L- l- yeah, but luckily I can't I can't put the MacBook in my pocket. Yeah, and, yeah. And put, or else I wouldn't put it down. Because mm. addiction is something that we all seem very susceptible to these days. It used to just be like the weed smokers and the drug addicts and the drinkers. Now it's now it's the social networkers, yeah. the yeah. influencers, the influencers, and the addiction, the right and center, isn't it? Insta models. Yeah. yeah. Can't put them down. Can't put them down. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. So, uh, all right. So that means you didn't really, you didn't have a phone for. You said you've ha- you haven't had a phone for eight years. So roughly yeah. what you had a phone for roughly about ten years then. No, like I had a, a phone from the start. I had a phone from the start of mobiles. Well, the one-to-one days, like, or before then. Yeah, way, way, way back. Way Did you back have one of the massive brick, one of the massive brick ones, the fixed yeah. area? Was it Motorola 88 or something like that? I, I couldn't afford them big bricks, man, but you like the little Mars bar phones and all the, 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 mm. the, the little BT. Remember BT come with one and everyone got the little... The 0956 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one to one, isn't it? It started, wasn't it? T Mobile, but it started off as one to one, isn't it? Mm. And it was um one to one. Imagine, yeah, you, <laughs> you get this little Spock phone, isn't it? Remember, it's like one to one. Was it not one Mercury? To one. Was it yeah, not Mercury, Mercury one yeah. to one. That was it. Wow, Mercury. That's funny, man. Mercury <laughs> is the messenger yeah, to the gods. Cool. Fucking yeah, yeah. hell. So Mercury you know one to one. You know them 0956 numbers that. They, they, if you still have one, they're, they're worth so worth much P, money. Yeah, I know, I know, man. I had one, I can't remember what happened anyway with it, but <clears throat> one-to-one, yeah, and it was like, get this mobile, and you can um, call landlines free after seven, innit? Yeah. yeah. But when you called another mobile, it was like, P, you know, it was ridiculous, yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever. So everyone gets one of them, and now they're out and about. They're not at home anymore, so you can't make the, <laughs> you can't make the free call to anyone's yard. Or pe- what people would do is like, yeah, I'm at this phone box. What's the number? Yeah, call me on this number, in it. That type of thing. <laughs> oh, what the fuck, man? But that's how they got us hooked from then. Yo, I need one of these. Yo, I got to have one of these. Yo, yeah, yeah, I can't go. What? Are you getting a new mobile? People queuing up for a new mobile every six months. Yeah, I'm telling you. What kind of madness is that, man? That's how you save the planet. You just keep. Using new phones every six months and mining all that stuff, <laughs> mining all their metals. Some, someone will planet. be someone will be building a house out of phones soon and saying this is the way forward. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, Harry said man had that from day for real, boy. Oh seven nine five six, was it? No, oh nine five six. Yeah, I don't even read out the number. It's an easy number to remember though. <laughs> Jesus, man, Th- those were the days, boy. <laughs> Harry Love, remember knocking for people. Yeah, yeah, knock, it's true, <laughs> though, man. It's true, though. Now we feel awkward. Now you feel awkward going around someone's Go yard. Around like, someone's hey, uh, so I take my shoes off. Or... Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Wait in the. If you hear, if you hear a knock on the door, and yeah, you'll you you'll bam me like, yo, who's that? Someone's knocking okay. on the door. Well, yeah. You expecting you somebody? Expecting yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you, ex- you expecting somebody? Yo, word, don't listen. answer it. I think there's a burglar. Yeah, don't Someone in there. You know that? Like, don't answer it for real, innit? This time it's the postman, like, your your bank, yeah. your delivery. Well, yeah. you, know, you know what cracks me up the most as well about, about phones is like, yeah, yeah, I'm one minute away. Yeah, I'm nearly there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, where are you? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm just outside the station. Yeah, oh, I'm at the station. Yeah, yeah. oh, I can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, 
uh, or even just people on them, you know, on the train, people on the mo- that whole the dude screaming his head off. Yeah, I'm no, I'm on the train, I'm on the way, I'm on the way. Yeah. Like, we've just passed them. Um, right, we're just leaving. Uh, it's like, bro, come on, man. Like, you ain't got to keep screaming out what the hell we're all doing. Like, <laughs> just tell them you'll be there soon. <laughs> you can't, you can't remember how to meet people yeah. in a place. It's like you say to them, "I'll meet you at Thing Thing." At sing sing and and then you all get there mm. as we discussed and how you did don't we need do the phone anymore. how did we you do know? anything four phones how did we do anything you you had to you had to have a map to go somewhere if you wanted to go yeah. away somewhere you had to actually get a map, hey, to hey, go map there. Boy. yeah like, you can bet that in the, in them in them days like my my granddad or whatnot he knew how to get everywhere yeah <sighs> And anywhere he didn't, anywhere he didn't know how to get, he didn't need to go. Yeah, basically, yeah. he had the map in the back of the boot. Yeah. He'd study that, say, right, I know where I'm going, and he mm. would go. Yeah, you knew everywhere around your area. You knew all the roads, the back roads. You knew all the little, you know, all the little shortcuts. Bro, I hate it. Like I'm using satnav when I've been, I've been on this journey. Like how many times I'm still using the satnav? Yeah, but just in case, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you just, yeah. I just I turn the sat nav off just as I get near my location, just so they don't know where I'm going all the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, good times, man. Good times, bruv. But yeah, I, I honestly, and I just feel lucky that I got to live that shit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I feel lucky that I got to live. I'm like, wow, okay, there is there's another world where I can I, can, I can't handle this shit without all of these mm. fucking tablets and pills and whatever the hell yeah. you know what I mean all these different phones is like yeah you're alright bruv nah I'm good you know I don't need it <laughs> I'm alright but you know I feel yeah. lucky uh, blue, blue. shout to Blue Fliggy <laughs> 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 give the payphone number out as your number bruv that's what people used to do with the one to one phone because there is like right alright they just give out the, the, the payphone number like, and people would ring that I'll be there at 8 o'clock you know what I mean? Just make sure. You'll be fuming if someone's using the phone at that time. That's when you're like, oh, fuck, man. I'm going to miss this call. She's meant to call me. Ah, oh, shit. Hurry up now. They put in another 50p. You're like, rah, come off. <laughs> uh, those are the days, boy. Yeah. One to one. But it was a bitch that now no one's at home. Everyone's out. So you can't call anyone anyway. You're not trying to call. <laughs> you're not trying nice. to call there, bro, bro. Mice, we used to, like, we used to plot in one flat and we'd have the, the phone, the house phone, and we would have the number of the phone box uh, just down the road, so we'd all just be smoking and we'd, we'd be phoning the phone, innit? Like yeah. the, the pay phone. And people would walk past the times when <laughs> pay phones and people would answer it and it'd be like, hello? Be like, you answered the phone for like the- phone jacket. Right, <laughs> you have a phone jacket before the phone jacket, boy. <laughs> no, but you could you could have a lot of fun with a phone uh, and a phone box uh, if you could see. Like you know, it's, it's the same the same thing when we used to super glue a pound coin to the floor and just watch people all day. <laughs> like we'd just wow. be done in the suits like on the balcony, just watching every man and his dog trying to pick up this pound coin. <laughs> that is hilarious, man. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I feel like you lot got jacked, man. There's definitely some shows where they're doing that shit, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe. That's hilarious, man. Troublemakers, boy. <laughs> Telling you, bruv. Yo, so, all right. So, like we said, man, we better head out, innit? We got to yes. hear more once you've got dates together um, for the release. You want to hear more? And obviously, um, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm guessing by then there'll be a video or two out by then. Yeah, mate. I'm so, expecting one from you as well. Yeah, bruv. I'm on it. Come on, man. You know I'm on that. I'm on that, man. Just say the word. Anything you want anything you want played or whatever, just fucking send it over. We'll, we'll put it straight up. Let everyone know. Yeah, my beloved. Let us know when it's out. All right, mate. All right. Well, thanks for having me, fellas. Ten pound bag, no man. Problem. Looking forward to it, bro. Boy, it's, it's been, been a good chat, absolute bro. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, yeah, man. Nice, Dan. Nice to nice to see you. Near, near. I like your hair style. See, you nice to see like... you again. We we knew each other a long time ago before I had I know, beard I know, and I hair. Know, I know. <laughs> yeah, so it's nice Probably to see don't you forget again. You there. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my memory's not that bad. Yeah, no, I just I'm didn't. Not, I, I don't know if I've got a disguise on now. That's the only thing. I'm always like, yeah, oh, yeah, beard and that. Um, what's that? 
coming like some Jeffro Toll business. Yeah, something. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funky you, wizard. You get it. Yeah, I, I got it, man. I'm, I'm also cultivating the same kind of thing. Yeah, I struggle, man. I struggle with mine, but it's like <laughs> good eight years going and still, <laughs> still just yeah. bristles. Like, I mean, My, but it will get there, man. Really good to check in with you. Bruv, man, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Serious, man. Uh, like, you know, the gems that you dropped as well, man, I, I think uh, a lot of people are going to appreciate as well. Um, and, uh, you know, being involved in this again, the £10 bag, like I was saying, it definitely it made me feel like, yo, all right, it's time to start eating up some beats again. You know, yeah. like, just that era. You, you start reminiscing about all the, the situations you were in around them times. And, you know, Louis would be like, yeah, come round. And then, you know, you're just right there on the spot. And then it's like, man. And all the other stuff that was going on, you brought that back when you was like, yo, I'm doing a £10 bag. I was like, what? And <laughs> you needed that, wow. bruv. I needed that, man. Putting the bag back. So thank you for that, bruv. Maestro, we, we, it was you, and you you got to explain it, but funky like poo and kippers. <laughs> Yeah, jeez, yeah, jeez, bro, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That way. And even I had to use that beat. I was like, bruv, I need to use this beat and make, you know, like a tune with it. And Louis was like, yeah, go on, man. And he let me do, yeah. But pff, that era, the whole time, everywhere I'd go to do gigs, everywhere, you know, especially around the UK, yeah. people would mention £10 bag. They would mention that shit. And I'd be like, and like he said, it would be about the poo and kippers or... The, the you know the limo all that stuff and it's yeah. like wow and, and so you know for, you forget about that through you do putting other projects out touring this that and the third life goes on and then yeah you just made me think about a whole period in my life where that was a, a theme an ongoing theme was this 10 pound bag thing even in australia bruv people go oh man you got fucking killed that 10 pound bag man you know what yeah, shout out to Louis Slippers, man. Whatever he's doing, he disappeared on us, but whatever he's doing, man, big up to that dude, because, boy. He's cool. He's cool. I can tell you that much. He's cool, and he gave he gave me the blessing to do this project, and mm. it's all above board, you know what I mean? So, uh, oh, yeah, big, big up Louis Slippers. I'd like to say big up everyone in the chat room, everyone listening, and, and all the rest of it. My, it's always bear love for you, mate. Yes, man. Likewise, bruv. Really appreciated, well, man. All right, man. I'm going to check out now, guys. Yes, man. Bless up, sure. brother. Take Peace. care. Thank Pharma you very G much. out. Peace. Jeez. Love, man. Yeah. All right. I think Press, so. uh, hang up. Hang up. There you go. It's, yeah, like we transfer. Ooh. You know them. <laughs> Yo, that was Pharma G right there. We should get the claps in or something. We'll go, yeah. yeah, clap. Yeah. Fire emojis, you lot, man. Fire if you emojis. enjoyed that chat there. Because, boy, man, this is what I'm saying. This is why I love do, being able to do this and chatting to, you know what I mean, so many minds and finding out a lot more about them that you might not never have known nothing about. Yeah. That's what we're on about here. Something you might not never know nothing about. Shout out to all the crew in the chat room, man. Chat room is fucking, you lot were off the hook tonight. Shout out to Alexander Morrison, my brother Harry Love. We're going to catch up, bro. Um, shout out to Peter Lewis Kisser. Shout out to Yamor, Gleam. Who else we got? Black Einstein. Shout out to DJ Locke. Shout out to Nicole Kisser. The old Kisser crew. Kisser, what do we call them? The Kisser couple. Uh, hopefully we didn't ruffle any feathers in there. In that little hen. <laughs> in the pen of yours. <laughs> But yeah, shout out to Stephen. Shout out to Stephen 88 Hawks. Who else is there? I feel like someone else. Richard Henry. Oh, that is a that's a Blue lot of, that's a lot of lot of fire in the in Rumble. The chat, that's really Yo man, we appreciate you mother lovers, man. You see what we're trying to do here. You know what I mean? There's certain pieces missing in the puzzle with this game. Uh people have been, you know what I mean, telling me to get something like this going for a while. But I didn't really think, you know, I was like, I don't know, man. But yeah, the awakening happened throughout this um, 18 months that we've had. And I feel like these sort of things are important, man. Not only just for us, but also for like the generations to come. Um, because like, 
you know, these, you know, conversations with people like Farmer, Blade and all that, they might just be on the level of like, hey, what are you selling to us? What, you know, what, mm. and just kind of making it just about business and whatnot. But these are people that have done, you know, done work. I want to talk to people that I know I've looked at and gone, rah, what made them or how did, you know, and I think a lot more of us starting to understand them sort of things, it can help us grow as well. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the gems, you see it there? Fire emojis like a mother lover. <laughs> Love hearts. You know what I mean? Pooing kippers. <laughs> Shout to Blue Fliggy. You know, the gems that Farb's dropped on us there, man. I hope people can take in. Watch it again. You know what I mean? It will spread the word. And um, let's continue, man. Keep growing. That's that's all we can do, man. Keep growing. You lot are not on your own. Just remember that, mother lovers. Shout out to Tubbs, Tom Arnott, Mr. Green, DJ Pork Scratchings, Reagantology, Barry O, Uncle Barry. Love you, mother lovers, man. Serious. Yeah, man. More to come. Shout out to my brother, Dan DNA. Thank you very much, as always. Man Good in shot. the boards. You know what I mean? Look, look at me. I don't even realize it. I'm waving backwards. Look, how do you ride wave backwards? Only right here. And some shit you might not never know nothing about, mother lovers. We'll be back next week. Uh, who we got? I think we got another guest next week, man. Shout mm. out to Kid Turnip. Yo, appreciate all you mother lovers, man. Really do. We'll be back again. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to give a shout out. Shout out to the KFC crew. Tubalicious. Uh... Uh, shout out to Cousin Joe. Yeah, man. All the crew locking in. Appreciate all you lot uh, giving us good feedback as well. Or even, you know, any feedback, man. Anything that mm. you think we can step up, we, we want to do that and make this something even more special for all you bitches and bitchettes. This is My Diggy, Dan DNA. Some shit you might not never know nothing about. And we're out. Oh. Oh, lovers.